This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Find over 20 million stock photos, vectors, illustrations, and video clips. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code ROOSTERTEETH4. That's Rooster Teeth and the number four. Welcome to a very special 10th anniversary Rooster Teeth podcast. Hey, hey. it's a live stream. Hello. Hello. We've got uh, Gus, Matt, Gavin, Bernie here. Hello. Celebrating 10 years of Rooster Teeth. One decade of our lives. It's two decades. No, it's not. It's <laughs> one We're celebrating. It was the 2000s and then the 10s. Don't do that. We've been around for two decades. We're celebrating our 21st anniversary. Today. Two decades of awesome internet content. Such Gavin was four years old when we started this. So I was talking with Gavin today about that. So we marked the 10th anniversary of the company with the first time we aired episodes of Red vs. Blue, which was April 1st, 2003. Correct. The trailer actually came before that. It was like, like August of 02. August of 02, but we, that's the day we officially started as Rooster Teeth Productions. And Gavin, you found the series when? How old were you, or what episode did you come in on? I found it at episode five, and I became a sponsor so I could see episode six early, and I was 14 years old. I've got a funny story about that, if 14. I could take, make a sidebar. Go ahead. I remember Gavin before we knew Gavin, because he did that thing that many kids did at the time, where he tried to get a free sponsorship by scamming me. Yeah, I did that. He did? <laughs> he emailed me saying that uh, he was really depressed because his parents had just died, and he wanted to know if he could have a free sponsorship. I said my entire family was dead, and uh, also it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and I, think, I think I replied with, fuck off, kid, get out of here. I remember this time quite fondly 10 years ago, because I was doing really well at school, and it was the last time I did well at school. And I found your website, and I probably spent four hours on it every night. I believe My it, grades, I believe that it was the last time. I not hold a bottle of champagne, like, with the guard off, like that, in that position, without popping that cork. It, it'll keep the tension up. I just don't want to see <laughs> you in the face so, with it. This is going to be awesome, because I've had a terrible cold ever since our South by Southwest party for, like, three weeks. Uh-huh. And uh, I just took a bunch of cold medicine to try to get myself ready for this live stream. I just want to be down this. mainlining NyQuil right before this, so if he passes out... <laughs> Stop, I push just, him out of the way and keep going. You don't have to watch. Oh, I just, just, this is X-rated. <laughs> hold it still. Is it, hold it still. Are Come you on. twisting his knob? Yeah. Is that bit. the proper British You guys term? Just, just sit in the corner and watch. Hold. <laughs> <laughs> How much is this? Is this extra? Man, which, which twisted up? motion, huh? I'm, I'm not into that. All right, just there we go. There we go. The, the old Indian burn. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate tease it Ooh. there for you. I oh, so would you put it down? You're not gonna drink anything? I watched Gus do the most disgusting sneeze I've ever seen. He had two things in his hand so he couldn't cover his mouth. He leaned over and it was just like a torrent of white fuzz. You're filthy. You're disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I coughed. Like, I'm wearing our special Rashid 10th anniversary <laughs> shirt, which went on sale. Uh. And, like, I coughed into it. There's like a mucus stain on it now. Uh. Is that what that is? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm filthy. Yeah, you know, just to the customers, they don't actually come with You know you can on hold it. a sneeze, right? You don't I, have to... I cannot. No, it's not. You can't, he says you can do it. I can't do I it. I cannot either. do it. You go. You let the sneeze happen, but you, you don't British. blast. You go, and then you release it slowly. No. You think it's like a politeness? Absolutely. No. So only polite British people can do it? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, he keeps telling me to do it because we used to work in the back office. The first thing Gavin ever did for us was he did a mini series in Red vs. Blue. I did Griff Bull highlights before that. As did well. you really? Yeah. That was one of the first things. Oh, yeah. You did, uh, we did all those EA commercials, too. Yeah, did commercials. Wait, 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 wait. How could you do Griff Ball highlights? Because you were there working on Seven when we made Griff Ball. No, no, no. We made Griff Ball in 2007. Right. And that was when you worked on Relocated? No, that was 2009. So 2007. So what were you doing there? No, I wasn't there. He I was, was remote. I was at home. But we oh. He was getting through file share. So did you have the actual, did you have the actual like, map files that I was using to make Griff Ball? No, I mean, like, we, we would have submissions, wouldn't we? Yeah, hold on. Let me check my laptop. Sorry. Uh, Make it for me, please. So, uh, you, so you would get stuff from FileShare, and then... Yeah, I would get a ton of emails with links to the Halo 3 FileShare, mm -hmm. and I'd just download all of them and look through all of them. It was really time-consuming, actually, but a lot of fun to do. I don't think they're actually online anymore. Probably not. Because they were... It was... I guess it was before we were using YouTube for that kind of thing. Yeah. So it was embedded on the Griffle site as a flash file. Man. I don't know. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Chris, 
Speak fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is over here. He's going. He's going. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Put your love on this side so you're facing. <laughs> okay. Put my love on this side? side. Oh, I see that facing you're this facing way. Him. I see. I'm about to fucking steal second base. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's doing over there. Christ <laughs> <laughs> almighty. <laughs> All right, this is going to take so, me a second. My apologies to anybody we, listening on the. We have a lot uh, of, of people here. You know, we're, we're on location uh, doing a shoot. And uh, we, we've been filming all day. We did some stuff this morning. We had a, a lot. Yeah, and then we had people come over here to help us set up the podcast. And uh, I think uh, we, we don't acknowledge them enough. So I want to thank everyone who's out here who did a lot of work setting up the lights and the cameras and dealing with me being sick and coughing and sneezing on everything. You should let them have your leftover champagne. I'll After let them. this. They can have my champagne as much, as, as much of it as they want. But we're out here at a racetrack, yeah. and I'm kind of glad that... The, the 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 engine noises have kind of subsided. It's been yeah. Uh, it's been, been pretty. Any, it's been pretty loud most of the day up here. We haven't seen any cars have, coming around in a couple minutes. Have you ever been to like a race before? Like I have actually because I worked on a, a race car movie. Or, oh yeah. Yeah, I worked on a movie called Driven with Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> so I got to go to a few racetracks and it's just deafening. Didn't you? Aren't you? You can't even think. Aren't you uh, a member of the crowd that gets crushed by a tire or something? I that am. Movie? I am. You man. got crushed. I got crushed by a tire. Me and my friend Jeremy. got crushed uh, by a car Jeremy. this week as well. What's that? You got crushed by a car in the short this week. That's right. I did. I'm getting crushed everywhere <laughs> I go. Derivative. I get, yeah. I think actually we might be putting too much blood <laughs> into our shorts because you were telling me you saw me walking around the office and I was completely in yeah. tatters and all bloody. And you said, oh, is that from that short that we just put out this morning? And I was like, oh, no, that's from a different short. <laughs> so You've been covered in blood twice. Maybe, maybe I've gone to that well too often. That Which, was, do you want to talk about that? Then now we've started making shorts again. Yeah. That was a big thing that came about with April 1st as well. Yeah. That's a, so that's an that's a April Fool. Is that's it? That's a joke. We're not really doing <laughs> that's it. One of the worst things about having and our anniversary being on April 1st is everyone thinks everything we say is an April Fool's joke. Yeah. It is totally 100% it's, ruined April Fool's Day for me. It's the only day of the year we try not to be funny. Yeah. And I, get, I think we're succeeding on this podcast so far. I'm not Absolutely. Sure. Do you think the but internet has made April Fool's more annoying? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know what's made? I mean, it, it's like everything else. First of all, everyone loves it. Everyone yeah. thought the April Fool stuff was fucking hilarious, and then everybody got sick of it. And now what you're left with is more people whining about April Fool's jokes than there are actual April Fool's jokes now. Yeah. So now the whiners are, are more annoying than the actual jokes themselves. I can ignore the jokes, but I can't ignore every single person I know saying how much they hate the jokes. What I don't like is when other people that we know do try to do April Fool's jokes on us, but not in that zone at all. We're always focused on what we're trying to get done. Like today, we put out a bunch of stuff, right? And we're just like very like heads down, heads down, kind of like focused on what's going on. And it was like a couple years ago that the uh, people who run our store called up on April April first and said, I think it was when we we were running. It was the first RTX. RTX. Yeah, first RTX. 2011. We were selling RTX tickets, and they they got us really bad. Called up and said that uh, the store had crashed and that we had taken down all of the stores, which actually did happen to us. Before in real life, right? When we were but not with a, with a different store company. So that wasn't I, I wasn't a fan of that practical <laughs> joke at all. I don't understand. I had like I a thirty second one. heart attack, and then I was like, wait a minute, this is April Fools, <laughs> you know? And our store yeah, our store was totally fine. That's unprofessional. Yeah, and we fired them. Yeah. No, we that's didn't. not true. No, we didn't. Didn't. April Fools. April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> you should tell them about your plan for April Fools. Oh, I used to be funny. Is to if you have to fire somebody. Wait until <laughs> April Fool's Day. And then, like, because, you know, when you fire somebody, it's always dramatic and, you know, they get upset and there could be a lot of throwing and shit like that. And so I thought it'd be funny, like, bring guy in, <coughs> you're going to fire, bring him on April Fool's Day and go, hey, it's April 1st, so I just want to let you know you're fired. Wink. And then, <laughs> and then keep that going. Like, oh, here's your severance, just sign that wink, wink, and everything. Walk him all the way out of the parking lot. Like, just make it all part of the joke until he realizes eventually when he's at home that, yeah, he actually did get fired. I think it'd be great. That's I think really funny. You could really diffuse it. You'd really enjoy it, too, as the person getting fired. I've yeah. never heard about somebody complaining about being fired on April Fool's Day. You always hear about Christmas. That's a bad one. Yeah. And then I guess, why do companies always fire on Christmas? Is that because they're getting their year-end numbers down or something like that? I don't and know. And so they just fire people at Christmas? Maybe, like, the CEOs are just, like, raging assholes. They're like, I want to pick the worst possible time to let people go. I don't know, man. Wink. That, would, that, would be, that would be pretty Happy holidays. serious. Wink, wink. That would be really serious. Have you ever been fired? No, I tried to get fired once at my previous job. 
uh, where I built the fort and uh, this animated adventure about it. Yep. Uh, and uh, I, would show, I would show up to work drunk at 10 a.m. and uh, they wouldn't fire me. They wouldn't reprimand me. And it got to the point where I had to quit because it's like I didn't respect them because I wasn't getting punished for all the bad <laughs> things I was doing. Why didn't you just escalate it? I did. I was doing like the absolute worst things I could. <laughs> Listen, it's one of those things you got to learn now in like today's society. It's really hard to get fired from a company. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know what I could have done more. Like I could have hired a hooker and fucked her, you know, at the <laughs> office, and maybe I'd still be there. I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> We're listening, Mr. Sorolla. You think that Do would that. work in our office? What would it take to get fired in our office? We've actually fired people, but I mean, what would it take for like, one, like Gavin? Let's just say Gavin. What, what would it take, take for Gavin, Gavin to get, get fired? fired? Please, I'd like to know. Yeah. <laughs> what would it take? Punching somebody would be a f physical fight. Yeah. What yeah. if? Uh, what Although it'd be hard to draw the line between like, oh, it was a behind the scenes thing where we kicked <laughs> each other in the balls. Yeah. People slap Gavin all the time. It's true. It's funny. What you next time somebody hits you, would you like for them to be fired? Uh, nah. <laughs> It's in the employee handbook. The employees of Rooster Teeth definitely have an advantage that no other employees have, where as long as there's a camera present, you can just do pretty much whatever no, you want. No, that's not true. <laughs> they, 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 they're the they CEO now. They're the like that. We had car <laughs> launch. Just whatever you're doing, doesn't matter what camera right there. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> there's, camera, four, there's four cameras camera, here right camera, now. Camera, camera, camera. Totally fine. Uh, yeah, I wrecked your car. Camera. Camera. So I'd, li I'd like to go back to talking about something um, before my mic. <laughs> Shut down and okay. we won the pennant with Chris. Um, we had a thing that happened today where I always said my, my, my secret superpower is the fact that I can fall asleep anywhere. And I absolutely demonstrated that today because we flew from Austin to Atlanta and I was asleep before <laughs> he boarded group one and Barbara and I boarded group two. He was asleep by the time we got on. His head wow. was smeared against the exit like this. I think it's this. And I woke up, there was German people singing happy birthday. <laughs> I thought that couldn't possibly be true. What was the German people, what were, what were they doing? They were just talking German and singing happy birthday. <laughs> I thought Schwein I was having... <laughs> like in flight? No, yeah, it was, uh, as, as we were pulling away, it's like, we've got a special guest on board today, some German kid who's like called Marios or something, and then we sung happy birthday to him. The whole plane? And everyone did. gave him a round of applause, and I just said wait, wait, like who this. was singing happy birthday in German? The family, I guess, and everyone else was just clapping. It's probably the same people who went to the flight attendant and said, hey, Make sure you make a special announcement because one person in our group has a fucking birthday. What a fucking jackasses. If I was asleep, I'd be pissed off. Yeah. Yeah, I woke up to people, German people singing happy birthday. I thought it was like some kind of thing from playing too much Bioshock. That's a German like, April Fool's? Is that what they do in, in Germany for April Fool's? No, they have no April somebody, Fool's. It's somebody like has a birthday? The solemn day of April. Jordan Frauschen Morgen. <laughs> That's what it's called over there. But, and then, I know Gavin was upset by that because he hates birthdays on planes. And he made a really I good point. I just don't like being forced to give a shit about someone's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Especially some I mean, kind of, kind of why I don't. What do you mean forced to no, give? A like shit? that's why I don't want people to make a big deal out of my birthday at the office. It's like I don't want people to be forced to come and eat some fucking cake because it's my goddamn birthday. You don't want the, the attention. I don't want the attention. I don't want people to be obligated to come sing me a fucking song and cut <laughs> some stupid ass cake. And the reason is, is if everyone's clapping and I don't, then I feel like I'm an asshole because I'm yeah. not clapping. No, I'm, I'm with Gavin. I wonder if I could go back on my text messages to your birthday. Hey, is there a way on an iPhone? Is there a way to download like all your text messages and just read them? I don't think so. No? No. Okay. You can just keep pressing it earlier. I, I know, you can load early, load early, load early, yeah. but... I, I mean, only use Snapchat, so I wouldn't know. What the fuck is Snapchat? It's uh, where you Snapchat send a message or pictures and it deletes after like five it's, seconds. It's the sexting app, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. So no, the, Matt, we didn't know that. We don't know. We like, didn't <laughs> know. We didn't know that. It's popular with all the tweens. He, keeps, yeah. he keeps everything on record. He does. His, his really? iPhone, if he loses his iPhone, all of us will have pictures of his penis, again. <laughs> Those of us who had to receive them via text. I don't the first think I've time. ever deleted anything. He archives ever. everything. How many terabytes? Can, can you get rid of your hand on the in the computer? Like just get rid of it so you don't ever throw anything away. Yeah, yeah just it, delete the trash <laughs> can. That's the no, only yeah, have, problem. How do you throw away a trash can? My life is is got to be like thirty terabytes at this point. Across the sum of your life is that depressing or is that impressive? I'm impressed. That's not as much as I would have thought. Would you say all your slow mo stuff too? Yeah, yeah. But that's probably like twenty nine out of the thirty terabytes, right? Yeah. So like, but just your regular that. life is like a terabyte, really. Yeah, I, I would always, you know when you get a new hard drive, yeah. and you've been struggling, you've been deleting files constantly, like deleting files, you don't need like render files. No, yeah. you don't do that. Oh, I delete render files. All right. Shut up. But then you start a just new hard drive, real. and so you, 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 for a while, you don't have to worry. It's like, look at all this space. That's all you want. Yeah. But whenever I would shoot slow-mo, it, it films at eight gigs per second, so I would just rinse through them, and there's no... There's no excitement anymore for a fresh new hard drive. I, listen, mm -hmm. I've always loved that, like getting new hard drives, is one of the best feelings ever. Like, 
Gus can attest to this. <clears throat> for all the years where I was one of the only people working on Red vs. Blue, like around the clock, all those years that the hard drives are what I used to back everything up. And I would, at the end of, I'm so meticulous about data organization and archiving that like a day after the season ends and we ship the DVD, I go up and I hand Gus a drive. Like, yep. This is the entire thing. And I pull the, extern or the internal drives out and then put them in, cl in enclosures so I have a duplicate of each and every hard drive. We just and label them. Mm -hmm. One stays here and then I take one to my house in case something burns down. And then someone gets one to get a file off of it and they drop it while it's on and you can't read it anymore. Yeah. Dad Jason did that. Yep. Yep. I was going to say that's, that's better than Brandon's method, which is just taking all the most important drives in the office and making like a, a house of cards stack out of them. It's so like they just all fall it's over. It's like the final round of a Jenga game, right? It is, it's like yeah. everything is just like teetering like that. Yeah. yeah. We we moved some discs that we hadn't moved in a long time and found like 30 archive drives <laughs> that Brandon had just stuck under a random desk somewhere. It's like a been squirrel like storing yeah. food for winter. It's like I'm going to remember where all these drives are. Well, we're trying to be better about that now. Well, it's one of those things too. It's like and then you always think when you're backing something up, I always think I'm never going to need this. I'm never going to require to go back to season 2. Episode, you know, number twenty-four. We needed all the shot time. number five, we, and we needed it all the time. All the time. Yeah. I mean, actually, one thing we needed for recently was was the Tosh thing. Mm -hmm. When we were on Tosh, they called us up and asked for that video, and that was one of the drives that I found under that desk that had been moved. Mm. Like we had no idea where those archives were, <clears> and they just like moved a desk, and there was a Jenga stack of uh, Brandon's drives. It was in there. You know, we, we talked about that before, right? How that worked because it was. We were very happy to participate and be featured on Tosh, but one of the things that upset me about it was the fact that they put us in the viewer section. No, we viewer right, submitted right. videos. Viewer submitted right. videos, which, I look, I mean, I, you which know. Which is fine. When I say we don't watch Tosh, yeah. but yeah. it just seemed like a weird, like we were out there entering contests with yeah. us. Right, right. We made it after 10 years. We got on Tosh. Yeah. <laughs> we got entered for the uh, cruise to the Bahamas. We got a check for that today. Oh, did we? No. Oh. Well, I guess they're required to uh, give us a check for airing our footage. I think. I still have the first check I ever got making money off of the internet. We, uh, back when we were doing ugly internet, we had banner ads on the website, and we were part of like a banner ad network. What was and it back then? What was the network? It was Cha Cha. Wow. I don't uh, remember that at all. And uh, we got a check from them for like $24. Whoa. And uh, we framed it. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, and, why uh, and why cash it, it when you can frame it? I also remember the first time we ever got a check from GameStop when they started when they started selling our DVDs retail, and, and Jeff lost it. Like, he, <laughs> I, like, it was almost like with my kid. In his defense, he says, you lost He's it. He's a fucking shithead. That's, I would never lose a check like that. I handed him the check, because it was like the biggest check either of us had ever seen in person, and I handed it to him. I, it's like, literally, he was like handing it to like a five-year-old, and like hand it to him, turn around, do a full revolution, go, where's the check? goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> where's the check? Where is it? I mean, we hunted up and down the street looking for that check. And it was like call on Congress, them. right? I had to call them and get a reissue. It was like on South Congress. We were going yeah. to lunch you to celebrate. You to him in the street. Hand to him in the car. <laughs> and then we get out of the car and I go, I need the check back. goes, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. So it just disappeared instantaneously. My kid does that. Where do you think the check is now? I, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. Somebody Would found you, it and went, what are these You think there's like, there's like some hobo in Austin who's like, look at all the money I got. He was like, I just don't want to cash it. <laughs> one of these days. Yeah, but my kid, we one time went to the movies. And Teddy, my youngest, who's the most irresponsible kid on the planet, he loses, he takes off his shoes and then he loses them. And then he puts it on you. Like, where are my shoes? Where are my shoes? Like, like I don't know where your damn shoes are. <laughs> They're your shoes. Put them in the same place. So one time he had one shoe on at the end of a movie. And we hunted up and down <laughs> the rows for his other goddamn shoe. And finally we found it. Not down three rows, up three rows. How does that happen? I don't even know. I don't even know. So we find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 15 minutes. They're cleaning out the theater, all that stuff. The guys are sweeping the popcorn up and everything. And finally, he's like, ugh. So I put down Ty's shoe, because he wasn't old enough to tie his shoes yet. This is a couple of years ago. Then we go walking. We walk three steps down. He's crying. And I turn around and go, why? He goes, I lost my shoes. He literally, this is not a joke. We went 40 feet, and he didn't have his shoes anymore. He didn't know where they were. So that reminds me of a pet peeve of mine. Is people who, at the end of the movie, just leave all of their shit there in the movie theater. I agree. Like, well, they just leave, like, their popcorn bags and their sodas and everything. It's like, why the fuck don't you just take it and throw it in the goddamn trash? Like, like it, I feel like it increases the amount of time between movies. Like, they have to send a cleaning crew yeah. in to come up and down everywhere, pick up all your shit. Like, why is that an acceptable thing? When I was a kid, my brother worked at a, a theater, my older brother, and then uh, 
me and my friends would go up there and just like he would let us come into the theater and, and just watch the movies. And then at some point, his manager figured out that he was letting us in to see the movies all the time, like yeah. during the summer. But he didn't get upset about it. He just made us clean all that stuff up. Oh, yeah. Because it always, like, it delays the next start of the next yeah. movie. Or at least it used to. It seemed like they've gotten... And kids are so dumb, that seems like a great deal. I was, it's a great, awesome deal. Yeah. yeah. What, what, a $5 movie for 20 minutes of work, right? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was really good. It's like good. a $15 an hour job. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. I it was pretty if, good. If I had the ability to, at the end of my life, find out all the stuff that was confusing during my life, like, I would probably want to... Most people It'd would want to It'd be like 30 know, terabytes of stuff. <laughs> most people would want to know... What actually happened to JFK? You know who really shot him and all that. But I think I would just use it for stuff that happened in my life, just little tiny mysteries. Like what? What's a tiny mystery of for Gavin Free? Well, once, what happened at VidCon last year? <laughs> that would be a big. One. I don't need to know any of that. But there was like, for example, there was a time where I was having a good time with a lady, and uh, like sex stuff. Yeah. Okay. And there was a Johnny involved. Okay. And all of a sudden, it, it was just like, and I just heard it split, and then it was gone. You want to know where it went? I, I, we were looking everywhere for it. I was looking on the, the ceiling fan and stuff because I thought it pinged at, up. Probably looking in the wrong place. Yeah, and uh, you know she checked up her, but it wasn't there either. You'd be surprised. There's nicks and crannies you can't get it. I found it about four days later. That is, that is a gynecological term, isn't it? Nooks and crannies. It is. It, well, that's, that's. But it's not in the nooks. It might be up in the crannies <laughs> somewhere. That's semester two of anatomy. Gross anatomy. Nooks yeah. and crannies. I remember that biology 101. Like, you nooks and crannies. <laughs> <laughs> but what are the chances of like the, the entire thing and the ring just getting engulfed? It was engulfed. everything. Like, Even the ring. Everything was gone about it. <laughs> it. It was like I never wore one. How does that happen? And the possibility is, is that I was drunk and I might not have put one on. But we, <laughs> <laughs> but we looked probably for like an hour that night and then like all morning the next day. Do you know what the only it? appropriate way to end that though is? <laughs> end that encounter is just at the end when she goes, I can't find it, go. Ta da! <laughs> That's the only thing you can do. Women love magicians, right? <laughs> so, you would know though if you, because you would have a rapper left at least, or the rapper. No, the <laughs> Did everything go? The All rapper was once. in the dresser and it just went <laughs> <laughs> It went out a cloud of smoke. I think I saw this on David Copperfield. Didn't you do this trick once? That's how no? he got Claudia Schiffer. No. <laughs> That's how he locked her in. We were actually worried that it pinged out the window. <laughs> That'd be the worst thing ever to be walking on the street. I remember <laughs> high, high velocity Johnny. I like that you called it a Johnny too to like have solidarity with Gavin. Absolutely. High velocity Johnny sounds like a bad animated series. Uh, I remember being a kid when uh, David Copperfield started dating Claudia Schiffer. I remember thinking, magic, huh? Like it was like it was like a thought, like, hmm, maybe I should get into this. Yeah. Never did. How'd that work out? No, no. Didn't, didn't work. No. But going back to the 10th anniversary. So <laughs> I was talking to Gavin about it today, and I thought Gavin would actually know, because he might remember what he was doing and where he was when he first started watching Red vs. Blue, which would have been 10 years ago. That's what I was saying. When my grades were really good, honestly, good at school, right before I found your site, and then I would spend hours and hours every day, and my grades just plummeted. So I want to say thanks for hiring me. You're welcome. Nobody else will at this point. Yeah, he made a good point. He said, if you ever get in a situation where you're on a website, and your grades get demolished by the fact you're spending too much time on that website, the best case scenario is that you end up getting hired by that company. Yeah. Like that's, that's kind of the hope that it works out. I mean, that's kind of what happened with me. I mean, I was playing video games so much and quote unquote wasting so much time yeah. that eventually it's like it turned into my full career of wasting time in video games. Not even making video games. No, no, yeah. Or competitively playing video games. Literally just wasting time in video games. So it all worked out just fine. It worked For out. 10 years. This is the longest job I've ever had. It still is not for me, believe it or not. Wow. I think, yeah. I think the second longest is only really? like three you years for me. Really? You were Twelve years I was wow. there. Don't forget I overlapped. So I was, Oh yeah, right, right. And I, I didn't leave, I didn't quit my day job until season three. Yeah. I was actually the last person out of uh, the- Because you were the president, weren't you? Original, yeah, I was the president of that company. And uh, I was the last person to leave my day job. Who's the first? Like Jeff was like immediately out yeah. the door. Like as soon as, as, soon as we uh, took off. You were already living in Puerto Rico. Though, yeah, I was, so. ar I was already- I had already quit and moved in with my parents because I, I was done with life at that point. Were you really? Yeah, I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm, I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. With this sickness that you have, you've been sick now for a month. I just want to let you know, it's okay. You can let go. You can die. It's See, fine. I, I was saying that to years. Chris earlier. Like, I was laying there on the floor, like, in, in pain. And I turned to Chris and I said, what if this is it? Like, what if this is the illness that's going to off me? Yeah. What if, like, I'm dead in a week and everyone's like, he should have gone to the doctor. Yeah. He should have gone to the hospital. Oh, my God. Don't tease us. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it's crossed. The dream. Would, they, would they say that? Or would they say, glad he didn't go to the doctor? Glad, yeah, I mean, maybe that's more likely. <laughs> yeah, but really, I mean, the fact that all of us have made it for 10 years alive and everything, that's statistically that's, not yeah, bad. That's, that's a, an accomplishment unto itself. So, Gus, well, it was great. That, though, Good run. Yeah, I was going to the light. I was, talk, I, was, I was talking to Kathleen the other day about our return flight to Austin. I guess we're all on the same plane. And I was like, oh, that's a bad we idea. We all have the same final destination. And she goes, why? I was like, you know. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it really freaked her out. I was yeah. always annoyed when I was on set with the guy I used to work with because he wouldn't let us eat the same meal just in case one of us got sick. And I was like, we're not the president. We eat the same meal. We're not the president and vice <laughs> president like, here. We, if we both fall ill, then so what? I don't care. So what? He was, <laughs> who's going to accept the Nobel Prize? He'd be like, what do you want? I'd be like, I was eyeing up the chicken. He's like, mm, I was going to have that. We got to flip for it. <laughs> Wait, so he wouldn't even let you get it since even if you wanted he, it first? So yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, yeah, why would he ask the question then? Just so he could cut you off? I don't know. He so would, what was, you guys were on the same plane and he would do this or? No, just like if we were on set in Craft England. Service. Yeah, and we wouldn't get the same lunch just in case we got food poisoning. And wow. One of us would have to take over from the other. If you get food poisoning, it's just like 30 minutes of pain. It right? Is. You just go to the bathroom, you Bomb. throw up, and that's it. Yeah. You're done. I also, I just, you know, whatever, so hire someone else if we both get sick. Yeah. That, so your, your co-worker who was concerned about it, he was the guy who owned the company though, right? He, yeah, he owned the cameras. The company was only oh. two people. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, so of course you don't care. Were you officially part of the company? No, I was, I was freelance. I worked with that company. I didn't own any of it and I was self-employed. You know, that's the thing that's been different about Rishi's over 10 years too, is that like as a production company, we've been really different in that we actually just, we hire people. Like, mm -hmm. even in terms of most production companies, everyone is freelance, you get paid while you're working, and then everyone goes off and finds new gigs. And then the challenge there is, how do you keep people available, essentially, to like work with the same people who you know are good at what they do? Well, don't a lot of production companies also just form for specific projects and then dissolve? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like, uh, for instance, Roosters would be like a production company, but then it, it, the way the model it, usually works is they would start Red vs. Blue Incorporated, they would run Red vs. Blue out of that, and then when Red vs. Blue wraps up, they just like dissolve the entire company. Keeps it all encapsulated, one thing, it makes sense. Yeah. Then they can always say the company. Liability. That company never made, never made any money. That's right. Yeah. right? So that's it's like Star money. Wars. It's yeah. Right. So like, who is it that never got paid for Star Chewbacca. Wars? Peter yeah. Mayhew. Peter Mayhew. Mm -hmm. Never got paid. Never, they said Star Wars never turned a profit. They showed on paper that it hasn't turned a profit. <laughs> so they just screwed him. Yeah. yeah. They didn't... have like $4 billion of expenses for that sale. To Disney. Well, Death Stars are expensive to build. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta pay the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the deal, though? I mean, is the, the kind of the unspoken fact there that Peter Mayhew has profit participation in Star Wars for playing Chewbacca? Maybe they didn't have any, they didn't have any money to pay him, so they offered him compensation on the back end. Do you know that uh, it was George Lucas, Francis Ford Coppola, and if somebody else here knows who, they can tell me, uh, it might have been... Peter Bogdanovich, or Spielberg maybe, at the time when they were all young directors, they would trade points to each other in their movies. Like as like some kind of like weird like solidarity thing. What does that mean, trade points? Like they would, so they, like Francis Ford Coppola would say, I'm making this movie called Godfather, and I'm gonna give you 1% of the money that I made from it. Like, like since I'm really? making this. And that they had a share of Star Wars and Lucas asked for it back after it got to a certain level of success. And he asked for that money back. <laughs> It's, uh, is, is that real? Like, is that like a fact? Well, there's a, there's a book that I read called uh, Easy Riders and Easy Riders Raging, Raging Bulls, Bulls, which is about that yeah. time and about those directors. It's pretty interesting, but pretty much everyone who's associated with that scene at that time said this is all not true. It's all bullshit. It's written by some guy around there. But apparently this was part of it. The, they said, that, yeah, they just traded points with each other on their movies. Yeah. Why would they do that? I don't know. I don't know, because they, they work together. Like, Francis like, Ford Coppola and Lucas work together pretty closely. And Lucas and Spielberg did uh, Indiana Jones, right? Yep. Yeah. It's like they were trying to build some kind of, like, Amway system into their movie making. <laughs> yes, that's exactly odd. what they were doing. I don't know. Like, Is Amway it's, it's, even still around? Um, you know, there was, a, there was another, like, pyramid scheme I was just reading about the other day that was, like, Zeke points or Zeke rewards or something like that. Did you, did you read about this? Mm -hmm. It was like they took over an entire North Carolina town and everybody in the town was in on this pyramid scheme. They were Zeeks? They were Zeeks. They got zuckered by Zeeks, apparently. Um, hmm. Are there like, any private towns? Well, well, you know, the town we're in now, uh, Brazelton, supposedly was owned by Kim Basinger, the 
the you know Kim Basing the, the movie star. So you can like she's uh, from this town and she bought like some percentage of it or something. Oh, I don't really. Know, yeah, like I don't really know how that works, but uh, apparently she like she owned a lot of it. I don't know if that means like Alec Baldwin got <laughs> half of it at some point. <laughs> That's really bizarre. Yeah. I know at one point years ago, we talked about buying a town like somewhere in, uh, it was somewhere like South Central Texas. And I think this was like yeah. 05 or 06. And they were selling the town for like super cheap. And we said- well, how, how cheap is super cheap for a town? Well, cons considering it's a town, right? With all the buildings, I think, I want to say it was like $30,000. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and we all said we could all chip in and own the town and like relocate Rooster Teeth there. At some point during and, the recession, we could have bought Detroit, I think. Yeah, I think so too. That was up for sale. <laughs> we could have bought some of the parts that they uh, they bulldozed. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know what happened to the town. I've seen someone else bought it. But there's another town also in Central Texas that got bought by the there's a there's a restaurant chain in Central Texas called Bikinis. Oh yeah, uh, and the what? guy and the Bik the guy who owns Bikinis bought a town in Central Texas and renamed it Bikinis. Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. Uh, Do you know how where he got all that money? Where Jack and Joel. <laughs> they go to that freaking restaurant every single day. Yeah. Especially when we, when we worked downtown, there was a bikinis on 6th Street, and it was like, 1115, let's go to bikinis. Like, not, at like, every single day. There was never a time where they didn't, and most of the time they wouldn't eat lunch. Yeah, I went there with them a few times. I bet you did. And, uh, just, just to eat lunch, but I don't know, I can't look at Jack, look at a girl for too long, because it... I get the chills. Yeah. He's there. It's, Cause he'll it's be, unfortunate if Jack is drooling before the food comes. Because he'll be eyeing up a girl and be like, mm, she's hot. But then he'll like look at her for too long and then be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like start making really pervy noises. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Does he really vocalize like that? Sometimes. Especially when watching videos. Any <laughs> Kate Upton thing. That's really funny. Mm. Um, I guess we should uh, we should plug that. Uh, if anybody has questions for us on Twitter, they can uh, oh yeah they can tweet with hashtag RT Podcast, and uh, we'll take a look at that later in the podcast and uh, awesome. maybe answer some of your questions. Ooh. That's hashtag RT Podcast for Rooster Teeth Podcast. Yeah. Did you ever go to Twin Peaks? Yeah, I've been to Twin Peaks. And and that that place you can have one of the hot. These are all by the way. These are all like restaurants like Hooters, where it's like scantily clad. So, so uh, in yeah. Hooters, do they do the thing where they come and sit with you and talk to you if you're on your yeah. own? Yeah. Weird. I didn't know that. But so that why are we asking about Twin Peaks? Because that's the first time I've seen that, where lonely dudes would come in and have some really fit. There's, a, there's actually a lot of restaurants like that in Austin. There's, a there's a ton. bikinis. Um, What's the? There's also Bone Daddy. Bone Daddy. That's what I was trying and, to think of. That's uh, one of the 35. Yeah. Bone Daddy. Yeah, it's yeah. a barbecue place. It's like a fish daddy's too, right? It's also Fish Daddy, but it's totally, totally different experience. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I thought it was like the seafood variant of Bone Daddy's, <laughs> no, no, no. which is a ribs place. One time Jason and I... What went the hell conversation did I walk back into, by the way? One time Jason and I went to Bone Daddy's. Uh, this was, God, probably like eight or nine years ago. Why isn't there a Sugar Daddy's? And you they, add back to the list. And uh, we got seated by this waitress we thought was, was really cute. And uh, we're probably making snide comments behind her back. And then the hostess takes us to our table. And she's like, what do you all want to drink? I was like, oh, well, I'll have a Dos Equis. And Jason said, I'll, I'll have the same. He goes, okay, well, I'll go get your waitress because I'm under 18, so I can't carry liquor. And we were both like, ugh, jeez. <laughs> that happened to Brandon and Chris while they were here. But that they're, has they're, happened to Brandon and Chris while they were here. They were hitting on a bunch of, like, 16-year-old waitresses. Brandon's doing the don't talk about this. They, he's I like, just told my like, story. I just told my so story. As soon, as soon as Brandon and Chris got here, they went out looking for a place to hang out in Atlanta. And they had no idea where to go. And I don't know, how did you guys figure out where to go? Friend a, a friend on Facebook said go to Magic City, yes. which is apparently an all black strip club or like the clientele yeah. and the, you know, the strippers are like 99% black. So they went in there, they're the only two white guys there. And they felt very awkward, apparently. Your brand's a white guy. The, the, the manager yeah. bought Chris a lap dance. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is about as white as it gets, too, honestly. Yeah. I think every, they all thought that uh, Brandon was Mexican. Yeah, I think someone asked Brandon if he was Hispanic. So. Yeah, do you get that a lot? Actually, it was that obnoxious girl that was trying to um, take advantage of Chris. He said it was an obnoxious girl who was trying to take advantage of Chris. Chris is shaking his head violently over there. So I, I can't Shout believe that girlfriend. some of these guys have been in here, have been here on location for a long time now. Yeah. Coming up on a week. Yeah. Too long. Yeah, and uh, like, I, I, I can't imagine what you guys have been doing all this time. Like, why do you get, I don't, I don't know why they have to come out. Why well, did they have to come out? So Magic early? City had a long line. <laughs> they had to get in there and queue up. Yeah. Um, we came out, we were just doing a bunch of stuff, and um, 
we were actually we were looking for a place to have the podcast for a while. Oh right. Because yeah. we weren't sure that there was going to be a place at the track where we could do it. Well, so the the funny thing was we had two other locations or three other locations lined up. Yeah. But they were all outdoor locations. Yeah. And the weather forecast for today was rain. Yeah. And as you can tell, there's a giant thunderstorm outside well, right now. I was trying. To, we were actually we were talking about doing something that related to Walking Dead since we're in Atlanta, and we thought that would be cool and. I, my mom and my sister live here, and I told them, I, you know, we're looking for like a Walking Dead location. And my mom said, oh, well, I can help you with that. I know one of the actors on Walking Dead. I thought, oh, that's cool. She never mentioned that before. Who's the, who do you know? He goes, oh, he's a really good actor. He plays one of the mummies. Okay. And I said, a big flashback sequence. I said, said, when they go back to Egypt. I said, mom, you know, they're not mummies. And she goes, pfft vampires whatever <laughs> so uh, what i'm trying to say is my family's connected yeah we've got we've got they, you know zombie 43 we know uh no we know mummy 42, mummy 42. <laughs> so yeah we we had a uh, yeah, did we, you watch have you been watching walking dead by the way i have not no. how about you no I never okay watched it. never mind season finale was last night or i think, I think yeah. the the season three finale yeah and then uh the premiere of game of thrones was last night i too. watched so in our Are hotel- you up to date on Game of Thrones? Yes. Okay. In our hotel, we have HBO, but we had to watch it pillar boxed and letter boxed. I heard that. So they have these great, like for our hotel has awesome, like these 40 inch TVs, but we had to watch it on a probably a display that was just like 20 inches. And that means just a bunch of black around the. Yeah, yeah. So it was like watching a smaller TV in your bigger TV. This is going to sound like the joke I was making during our PAX East panel about your travel problems versus my travel problems. Mm-hmm. But last night we tried to watch Game of Thrones at my new house and. I have the projector and the screen left over from my old media room, which I don't have room for in my new house. And so we were gonna set, I set up this outdoor projection environment. So we, we hung the screen on the side of the building, the side of the garage, which it's beside the house. And then we set up the projector and all this stuff. Had it all good to go. Gus, this is fucking infuriating me. I tested it with my PS3. I had two major technology problems this week. One is I plugged in my PS3 to watch the Hobbit Blu-ray. So my, my PS3 had not come out of the box to go in my new house, so it wasn't on the internet in any way, shape, or form. It wasn't even on the wireless in that house. Put in the Blu-ray, it says, you must update your system settings to get a new encryption key to play this Blu-ray. Oh, yes. What, what is that? So does every Blu-ray player have to be on the net? I believe so. Really? Yeah, well, I, it's built into the Blu-ray spec, or Blu-ray player spec is internet connectivity. That's, That's horseshit. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so... I mean, why would you buy, like, offline media? Yes, the right. Like that. I mean, what's the, yeah. Right, exactly. They're, they're killing themselves. There. Like if you want to go in a car trip or something with your kids well, and give them a, you know, yeah, yeah. a Blu-ray, it's like you don't want to have to connect to the internet in the middle of you know, Topeka. Where, where well, they're hoping it's going to be transparent, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. sure they, they think it's going to be at home. And you're We're all have tech it on. people, but we struggle with this kind of thing. Imagine a regular just person who doesn't know anything. Like, wait, wait, see, no. How does the average person set up a wireless network? It's no. Yeah, oh, believe me, I still get calls hey, from my mother. Like a couple times a year, and when I get the call, it's like, what's my wireless? I'm like, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, no, 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 no. I would tell another family story, since they're all here uh, in Atlanta. But, like, you know, we hit 4 million subs on YouTube. Yeah, hey. today. Yeah, and um, my uh, mother-in-law really wanted to subscribe to us on YouTube before we hit 4 million. She wanted to be part of the 4 million. <laughs> And it took us six hours. <laughs> really? To subscribe? Yeah, to subscribe to, to us on, subscribe on, on YouTube. Wow. It was worth it, though, because that's the one that put us over the top. Yeah. <laughs> that, that did it. So that we'll talk. Everyone in the, uh, on Twitter is asking me about what is the location. We'll get to that in just one second. We actually talked about it at the beginning of the live stream. Hold tight. We'll talk to you about it in just one moment. Do uh, people see the cars going by? I, I think they do. They yeah, want to know what the people are is, saying that they want to see a crash so that Gavin screams. <laughs> I think that's, that's really demented. You want to see people get hurt? That's fucked up. You want to see Gavin scream? Just watch this. Hey, hey. <laughs> Take it easy. The, uh, but the other thing that happened to me this week was after I updated my PS3 in order to play just a Blu-ray disc to play The Hobbit, which took, by the way, 45 minutes to watch a two and a half hour movie. Okay. What? Yeah, it takes, it takes forever to update a PS3 if you haven't done yeah. it in a long time. Oh, I just, thought you meant you watched the movie in 45 minutes. No, it took 45 minutes to update the PS3 to watch a two I and a half hour I knew the frame rate was I think high. That, <laughs> I didn't know it was that high. That's probably the game I've played the most on my PS3. Is, the Hobbit? Is updating <laughs> PS3 firmware. You know, it probably is for me, too. I mean, I played Journey, um, and I played Uncharted yeah, 2. I've played all the Uncharted games. Yeah. But I, I spent more. I feel like I spent more time updating my, my yeah. PS3 than I did actually playing on the damn thing. 
Um, hopefully they'll make that better in the PS4. They have to. Supposedly. They talked about that in their, their reveal. I'm also hoping that on the new Xbox, whenever that thing is announced, it's the worst kept secret probably in the world that, that, that Xbox is going to have a new version soon as well. Um, I hope that they have a way to like auto-sync like, all your DLC. Like, yeah, that'd I, be great. When I go to a new box, I go, I'm going to play Borderlands. Just get all the DLC I'm supposed to have for this or yeah. whatever. So I had a bit of a problem. You know, we're here on location. I, I, I haven't finished Bioshock Infinite yet, so I brought it with me, and I brought my gamer uh, uh, tag. Yeah, I however. Plugged, I plugged them into a new Xbox on the internet, uh, but to sign in, I had to authenticate that it was really me, so I had to get a text message with authentication code. That's a new thing. I applied it. Then it said I needed to add a new email address to be able to authenticate. So I had to add it. Then I had to wait for an authentication email and put another code. Uh, then I had to go through and sign in. I think I waited 40 minutes for all of this before I could even start playing. I, the, uh, that happened to me. When they just introduced that service, I got hit by that. And also, it was getting so much traffic that it wasn't working and it wasn't sending out the text codes to the phone. Yeah, it took forever. Yeah. So uh, that was a pain in the ass. That, my, that needs to be better. Mine is even more busted than that. And when it asked me to do all that stuff, it sent the text to my UK phone, which the number is no longer in use. I don't use it anymore. And I text you on that thing all the time when you go over there. That's iMessage, though. It's not actually the, it's my email address. Or I see. Okay. But anyway, so um, that, I can't get the code they sent me. So to that. delete that and then add my American number takes two months. Yeah. Like they say. I'm really sorry about that. They say we'll delete this in like May, so I have to wait that. now until. Didn't the, uh, the EA guy resign because the Sims? Sign up process of all well, that. He was, resigned was around so, that was so time. bad. I, I, thought he, I thought he resigned specifically because of that. Really, Matt? That, that do you do you like do you have like visibility on that? Like, I mean, do you, do you know what that problem is with that thing? With the Sims? Yeah. And yeah, the I mean, sign up process. You're CEO also. Do you like? Did you like get the inside information from the CEO of EA? You like do the handshake? You're like, yeah, hey, we're on LinkedIn together, man. <laughs> it's like all, I don't know if people know this. All CEOs have a secret <laughs> handshake. One degree of separation. Secret club. It's like the five timers club at Saturday Night Live. We all go to some place like that. We have bathrobes. Yeah. Sounds nice. That's yeah. sweet. You'll put your keys so, in a bowl. So, so the final <laughs> problem I had with all this was... Everybody wants the Yahoo CEO. <laughs> recording Game of Thrones on my DVR. We're gonna, then we have to go outside with it. So I'm going to wait till it finishes recording. I'm just going to take my DVR outside and play it on the right. projector outside and project it. It's going to be great. Seems easy. Fun. We cooked meats, had cheeses, and it was perfect Game of Thrones night and all that stuff. Cheeses. Jesus. Ex Jesus. <laughs> it was Easter. Plural cheese. So we do all that. The goddamn DVR checks to make sure that it's got a coax cable connected to it and then it can get on the network to play a pre-recorded show on it. Really? Yeah, so we couldn't do it. I, guess I, I have to get like a 70-foot coax cable wow. in order to do that. I or I can just torrent the goddamn thing. Because right. you, don't, you don't own the recording, do you? Like, it's not yours. I'm just borrowing the recording. I don't care. Uh, can I borrow it to my backyard? Can I borrow <laughs> yeah, it yeah. 25 feet yeah. away? You have HBO Go. Oh, I heard HBO Go went down for several hours last night. Well, we shouldn't laugh about that. Our, I think our site just went down from the yeah. traffic from I the think, live stream. I think it did. I was getting text messages. That's why I have my phone here. I was getting text messages from Adam like, Jesus Christ, hold on. But he's like, I'm getting like alerts from him. Yeah, so way to go, HBO. Amateur hour. So do you think this weekend was the most HBO subscriptions in history? I, I got cable again for the first time in, I think, five years, simply because I wanted HBO to be we able to watch same, Game Jeff of Thrones. Jeff did the same thing. He got HBO last night. I have not. I canceled my cable when the writer to. strike happened, and I've not had cable since then. Really? Yeah. God, that's like solidarity. Mm. You know what the biggest show of solidarity that i Solidarity, ever, that's right. Content creators. You know what? The biggest show of solidarity that I've ever seen, like commitment to a cause... Do you remember we used to make fun of people for changing their avatars? This just originally went through with the marriage equality thing. Oh, like, yeah, that was a big pe thing. People yeah. think changing their avatar right. is changing the world and it's not, or liking a photo is going to do something. It doesn't do shit. You know, it's like false yeah. activism. Do you remember how we had that conversation? What, what started that conversation? Was it about the uh, uh, uprising in Iran? You nailed it. In Iranian democracy and everyone on Twitter was changing their avatars the green. green? Yeah. yeah. Jonathan Colton still has a green avatar. To this day. <laughs> stuck with it. He did. I think it's like three and a half years later, four years later. Do you think he's the only person left with a green avatar? I'm, I'm amazed. It, there was a couple people I knew that had it for a while, like three or four months. He's going on like three or four years. We talked about it. It's like, when do you make that decision to undo the avatar change? It's That's like, the problem with that. It's like, at what point do you go like, okay, I'm not so much into marriage equality anymore. <laughs> so now I'm going to go back to me at the bar with my buds. Yeah. You know? It's like, you have to make that choice of like, this issue is not resolved, but you know, I'm kind of over the whole like, Getting upset about it. It's thing. not popular anymore. Exactly. It's, 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 I don't ever want to go through that lame moment, so I'll just support things the way they should be supported on the front end. Yeah. Like, uh, wasn't it Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie who said they were never going to get married uh, as long as uh, gay marriage was not illegal or not legal in the U.S.? 
Oh, was did it? they say that? I don't yeah. know. Did they That's, get married? I don't think they are married. I don't know. We're not. <laughs> Anybody want to fill us in? This is, this is that? Who's, not who's a got, celebrity who's gossip got uh, podcast. Right now. Okay, let's talk about where we are. Let's talk about where we are. We're, We're at a racetrack. At a racetrack. There's, a, there's, there, the cars are not as loud, but I keep seeing like strings of Porsches drive by. Yeah, what were those cars going by earlier today? Uh, they were Porsches, the ones that were painted all crazy colors. Yeah, yeah, they were Porsches. Were race cars. Yeah, yeah. So we're at a racetrack in southeast Georgia. Yes. Because we are filming northeast Georgia. Oh, northeast Georgia. Sorry, southeast part of the country. Uh, we're at a racetrack in Georgia. Uh, we are filming our first episode of Immersion that yeah. we have filmed in. Two years at this point? Has it been two years? It's been two yeah. years. No, it has. It really yeah. has. It really has. Whoa. So in addition, to, uh, in addition to doing more shorts, which we're really excited about, uh, we're also starting to shoot new immersions. Now, this is, not, this is not season one, and this is not season two. This is an opportunity we had to do something really cool. Uh, so this is a between seasons episode of immersion, uh, but we're going to start filming more immersions this summer, uh, probably right after we wrap up production on day five, That's right. and then get uh, Ruby and RVB season 11 uh, up on their feet and, and running, so, yeah. which will both be summer series. So. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of stuff. This is, this is uh, I'm really excited about this immersion. Uh, you know, we've been, we've been filming all morning uh, over down the way, and uh, I think it's, it's easily our highest production value. It is. Like, highest quality uh, immersion that we've done so far. Well, because we're on location this time, we had to hire um, outside crew. And we've had actually really good luck with that. We've had good luck with that this time as well. Um, everybody who's come in has done a lot of um, cool projects before, and we had a, a great shoot this morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about how the footage is turning out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah. I was seeing some of the stuff. We had some uh, like those GoPros that were mounted. Yeah. And we were watching uh, some of the footage here before we start on the podcast, and it looks great. Yeah. That's one of the things that's that's fun is when we like have some more resources. Like we have two GoPros. And the people we're working with had three, so suddenly we have five GoPros, so we're like getting every crazy angle we ever wanted to get because we have the opportunity to yeah, do it. Yeah, absolutely. Which, by the way, the GoPros are amazing. Have you ruined one yet? No, we you have not. It's not a good shoot unless you trash a GoPro. No, one of the, one of the guys uh, uh, on this shoot told us a great story about they, uh, he was shooting uh, a race car. Can you what a GoPro is? First? Tiny, tiny little, little wide. camera. It's a tiny little camera that you can mount anywhere. And they use it a lot in uh, action, extreme sports photography. Helmet cams. Helmet cams. If you see the, motorcycle the cams. stuff, all that, all that kind of thing. Yep. So they're great on cars and just in all kinds of different, uh, you know, tight places where you need to put something. And hey. uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you have a Johnny that's about to explode, you want, <laughs> you want your GoPro for that. But uh, one of the guys was telling us a story about how there was a, uh, he was shooting a, uh, a race and there was a car that went off the track and caught on fire and it had a GoPro on it. And like, I guess the GoPro fell off, but it was around like all the fire and the entire car burned up, you know, like a thousand degree fire or whatever. And, but the GoPro survived and they got the footage of it. Oh, no thing. way. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's like a great GoPro commercial. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't believe that. Uh, people on Twitter keep asking if uh, Gavin's zipper is down. Chris it is one. not. His, uh, his zipper's fine. Yeah, it's just uh, to throw it to me. This it's is exposed. His the zipper is exposed. The flap doesn't cover the zip, but so, it is up. Yeah. This is uh, a GoPro, for example. The it's tiny. A, a tiny little camera. That's actually the newer one, right? Yeah, yeah I have the first one. That one actually you can control from an iPhone. <coughs> so like you can it's set just, it up somewhere, like on a train track, for instance, yeah. go under the train. And then when the train's coming, you just boop from your iPhone. And we, should, we should charge them for this. I would say the, <laughs> o the only thing I don't Not like... gadget stuff. Let me see. The only thing I don't oh. like about GoPros is... Like on set, that if you're acting in something, you end up also being a cameraman. Like uh, we just Joel and I just did a short that was really intense. Like we shot for four or five days, man, nonstop. And half the time we were doing stuff, <coughs> Joel and I had the GoPros and we were being our own cameramen mm -hmm. doing stuff. And I think uh, we finished one take and Brandon was napping. <laughs> so that's not right. Well, it's like when we filmed the uh, the roller coaster. Short where I was on yeah. the roller coaster. I, yeah. I, I, it was the same thing. Yeah. I had a flip at the time because GoPros yeah. didn't exist. And uh, like I had to flip in front of me on roller coasters, like trying to deliver lines and film myself and delivering Joel, them and at the Joel, same time. If you want to go back and watch that short, Joel has the script. Yeah. <laughs> He's holding the script on the roller coaster. So, how many times did you ride it? We rode Thunder Mountain three times and we rode Splash Mountain one time. And then we went on the merry go round like 
four times. I so think. that that short when the, the, you didn't have to go in the merry-go-round. That was just that, was, that was personal. It was yeah. just like, hey, yeah. we. When you and Joel were running around, and <laughs> didn't you have a, a screwdriver in your head at one point for one of the shorts? Or I someone, did. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, actually, Jess Kid filmed that. Yeah, what was that shot with then? Uh, that was a shot with a cannon, and actually, uh, that was amazing because uh, Jess Kid on the site, uh, you know, he is not only a great uh, cinematographer, but he also was like a karate champ. Yeah. And he's very athletic. And we were running, Joel and I were running forwards as fast as we could. He ran backwards. Oh, he had no one pulling him or anything? No, he was literally running <laughs> backwards, holding a camera. What even a steady cam? He was just holding the camera on his own, making it steady, and could run backwards as fast as Joel and I could run forwards. That's crazy. Yeah. Of course, Joel and I are really out of shape. <laughs> but you had to speed up the footage to make it. It was still impressive. To make it look fast. What's this? So I see someone, uh, Dragon Pool One, is asking about the fate of the beer I brewed at the uh, podcast set. Everyone was complaining mm -hmm. about it last week, by the way. They were? Yeah, about you weren't on the smell? podcast last week. By the way, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, we miss you. I don't like when you're not on the podcast. It's like, hey. yeah, it's just, you know, you need, you need to be on it every week. Um, I do my best. 96% of the time. All right, how many, like, how many of you missed, do you think, over the course of three decades uh, that we've been doing it. On the spreadsheet, uh, I think I'm up to like 96% attendance. You keep a spreadsheet of no, that No, 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 well. it's, it's on the, the subreddit. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, so if I've been to Nice Comedy at 200, so I've missed like 10 maybe? Mm-hmm. You know I, what? I would have guessed I, you'd missed that I, I ventured back into that subreddit like this, this week and I wrote you about it and I said, I just, yeah. I, I gotta, it's like I feel now the only purpose to go in there is to correct people who are misquoting me. There are so many things wrong in there. Yeah, I'm just like, it's, it's, it's so weird to like say one thing. We, we talked about after the tour thing, how we yeah. said the tour thing, and then it put tours in the conversation, and here I am doing it again. But um, like there was, there was one thing in particular that somebody was talking about with Ruby where I said, we're not gonna be uh, producing or doing anything with Red vs. Blue Season 11 because we're all focused on Ruby. That is not at all what I said during that yeah. PAX panel in any way. I just said that um, we're doing a lot of pre-promotion for Ruby and therefore, I'm not going to do a lot of pre-promotion for Red vs. Blue Season 11. Just because it'll come out when it comes out. Otherwise, our whole you, site turns into coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. You did say you won't hear about it until the day it comes out. That's what I said. That's I said, what the exact quote, I think. Yeah, that, that's a clear statement, right? Yeah. That you, you probably won't hear anything about Red vs. Blue Season 11 until the day it comes out. And I said today that it'll be a summer series, you know? But so you're probably, not doing it? What's that? So we're not doing it. So we're not doing it. I'm sorry. I'm this sorry like, to say. I didn't want to make a joke, but I thought, what does it matter? What? I, I, thought I shouldn't make a joke, but it's not, it really doesn't matter because it's going to, whatever you say right now is going to be misinterpreted. I mean, that was the point of the first one, right? That was the point of retelling this. No matter how you say it, it gets misinterpreted. Like the tours thing, you said, we can't do tours. And they said, oh, now they're doing tours. Right. Was the, was the response on, on Reddit. Or the other one is that if you go to get a tour at the office, Bernie's going to get mad. When all I said during that whole thing was, we, we don't, we hate turning people away. No, you know, yeah, the, the, yeah, the hate why. is like, we feel bad. Yeah, we feel terrible, yeah. you know, because people come and they're like, oh, we, we drove from Maine. It's like, oh, shit. Well, here's what we can show you. We can show you the lobby. Yeah, we had a, a family come down from uh, Ottawa yep. this past week, and I felt really bad. Like, they, they came down, like, they even, like, took the bus from their hotel. Oh, like, my come God. Down to the office. I was like, I can't show you anything. I was like, this yeah. is the lobby. Uh, I'll talk to you for a bit. They pulled the We Know Barbara card. <laughs> Barbara's going to Barbara shake her head violently. Apparently, uh, apparently the, the kids go to the same school she did uh, back when she was growing up. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I showed them the, the lobby, and that was about it. I'm going to turn this on, I'm going to throw it to you. All right. Ready? Awesome. Is, I'm recording on this, oh, that's okay. Look at that. Fucking solid grip. Did you? Yeah. All right, I'm going to see if I can upload that here. Well, can I upload, or am I going to kill our bandwidth? Uh, you'll probably kill our bandwidth. Uh, you can How's our site doing? Uh, I don't know. I'm not getting any more uh, messages from Adam, so I assume uh, he killed it's on himself. fire. You know, like Adam, like can eat a ghost chili. I broke not this. Not sweat. Yeah. But I, I got a feeling he's sweating right now. Yeah, I think so. Do you think I, but, I think the site is so much better. I think, no offense to anybody else here who works for his chief, Adam is one of the best hires we've ever had. Because when I yeah, because he replaced you. Yeah, yeah it's your job. job. <laughs> when I used to run the website, it didn't work for shit. It was no, like, <laughs> it's terrible. Like, the first six months he was hired. He would come to me and be like, why is this like this? I'd be like, oh, because I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, I tried to piece things together. I'd be like, this is going to take me a year to fix. I'd be like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> can I, can I, I mean, since we're talking about this now, I have a bone to pick with you about part of the website. Pick, and it's, come on. it's one of my absolute favorite pick, parts of the site. Pick my bone. <laughs> get you ready to have your bone picked. Um, so on the AchievementHunter.com site, and Achievement Hunter, I think most people consume Achievement Hunter, if you want to use that word. 
uh, on YouTube and not necessarily on our site. Right. Like traffic on YouTube for it is much higher than. Although on, they should come to our site. I a totally lot of agree. Cool stuff. From Achievement Hunter. And because like, there's a lot of features on Achievement Hunter that I think a lot of people are aware of, one yeah. of my favorites that I use all the time is the achievement checklist for a right. game. Yeah. And I just recently started a Bioshock Infinite race where I'm racing through all the achievements with Jinx, with Ashley. And so I was using that to track the stuff and also get, kind of get tips on how to get some of these things. But the checks aren't working. They're not, they're not working. They're not? And that's like my favorite part of, this, of that particular site. Please fix that. No one told me until I right had now. no idea that it wasn't working. I had no idea. No, like, I didn't know. I mean, the check marks will check and they'll stay, but they don't stay from one session also, to the next the way they used to. Also, the online bug reporting is not working. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. By the way, this is the way our bug reporting works in Rushdie. There's a lot of times somebody walks into somebody else's office and goes, what the fuck is this? What's, yeah. what's yeah. going on with this? Why is this busted? Sounds like Adam's problem. <laughs> Sounds like an AP. Yeah. Or Holly problem now. Yeah. Yeah. What's, so is Holly the person to take that to? Uh, no, Adam, because he dictates Holly's schedule for bug fixes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of authority. Yeah. You know, I think, that, I think, she, like, she's essentially, at this point, rewriting the website. Uh, again. Yeah, we're going from... Like, now, our, our be careful what you say there. She's rewriting it on the back end, not changing like, the look and feel of no, it. No, no, it's, well, it's, it's the same look. It's just, right now, our website uses tables, mm -hmm. so she's rewriting it in CSS, okay. so that it scales better if you're on a phone or a tablet. So it'll look exactly the same, just like the architecture that delivers the site will scale better for uh, be, different resolutions and different devices. It should be faster and let us put in like those modules and not have them break the site. Right. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be it's, a, it's, it's, it's a really daunting project. So that's, that's her big thing right now. Okay. Could you class that as knowing another language? Is that you your know, way of saying that it's not gonna, my request is not going to be processed? Uh, your request will be processed <laughs> in time. Uh, is he still in charge of this, Matt? What is no. the fucking structure now? No, I I, I'm, I'm a senior technical advisor. That's right. That sounds like bullshit. That's almost, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's I, almost I, lame as creative director. I provide uh, <laughs> roadmaps and, uh, for, for uh, technical decisions, Listen, but Adam is the director of technology. No offense. You got to give me at least one or two years with a bullshit title before you get a bullshit title. I have tons I of bullshit titles. That's only fair. I, I have think. tons of bullshit titles. Nope. You know my favorite one? What? Hand of Xenu. <laughs> You're going to be dead in a month anyway. I'm going to be dead in a fucking week with that. What do you have, do you think? Uh, I think I have pneumonia. I really do. Oh, Jesus. Would really? you be annoyed if you died? Obviously no, because I'd be, be fucking dead. Yeah, but would you? So no, you know, I get what he's saying. Say you, you were going to die this week and you knew it. Would you be a bit minged off or would you be all right with it? I'd be minged off. I spent my last fucking week in Georgia. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taken. I'd rather be back in Austin. Hey, somebody give me a cable. So we're not, I just used the term minged off. We're not, we're not at Dragon Con. Be really, I think the last, really minged off the last time I was in Atlanta was, that, uh, I think, in 2005 with Matt at Dragon Con. Yep. That but was, think, if you died in Georgia, you could be mummy 45. <laughs> <laughs> Your career could take a step up. Or a vampire. <laughs> Whatever. Duh. Whatever. That's the same event where I met, uh, where, where I saw Trisha Helfer. Trisha Helfer, and we hung out with the chaps for a little bit. Yep. And, uh, oh. And then chaps we went out. Oh, we made Homestar Runner. Right. We actually went, went out and. Uh, we had a ham dog. We had ham dog with the dudes from. Animation Master. From Animation Master. Yeah. Those were good dudes. Yeah. They had a bunch of funny stories. Explain, you gotta explain what the ham dog is. So the ham dog, I don't think it exists anymore because the place that had it was called Mulligans, right? Right, and they're closed. They're closed, but they. I think they reopened for a short time as a different place in East Atlanta. Just a different tell name. What the fucking handle is. I'm getting to oh, it on my I speed. You're in the south. You got to take it slow, you baby. Can talk to, you can talk to your boss like that. So uh, because he's so got the CEO uh, handshake. That's sorry, right. Sorry. I got the I got the bathrobe. I really I apologize. So um, uh, the the ham dog was this amazing concoction along with a Luther burger, which we'll also explain. That was it started as a hot dog. You r kind of coat it or cement it in ground beef, right? Yep. You deep fry it, right? Then you put that in some kind of weird bun, and then you cover that with <laughs> chili, cheese, and nougat, I think is the last No, there's no, no nougat on no there. Nougat? There's no nougat on there. I, w I wanted to take it up a notch. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wanted to take it up a notch. I'm sorry. No, but everything except for the nougat. Everything yeah. except the nougat's right. So, and then, you go straight to the hospital. It, sa it, it. it sounded ridiculous when we first heard about it. It's one of those things you absolutely have to try. But yeah. now it's like there's like 40 different well, restaurants and all well, here's, here's, that kind of thing. Well, here's the thing. The other thing that they had that was a big big uh, meal there was the Luther Burger. Right. Which now you can get in Austin at Gordo's. It's not, they don't call it the Luther Burger, but it's the same basic thing, which is it's a hamburger, and instead of buns, you get donuts. For it's Krispy Kreme donuts. It's Krispy Kreme, yeah, here. But at Gordo's makes their own donuts. 
They have fresh donuts. Fresh? I just spit all over that. I just spit all over you. Spewing so mucus from. God. I'm so glad Did I'm you not really? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're gonna be a moment for Oh, don't die. <laughs> so we, should, we should also explain why we're here. This was actually the third choice for where to from film this, track? Pod, this, yeah. this podcast. Yeah, Racetrack. Our, our, can I, should I mention our initial choice? Go for it, yeah. We initially wanted to do it at Chateau Elan, which was where the grape stomping lady oh, video oh, happened. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, She's literally the only person I've ever seen who was able to disappear from the internet. Uh, After she f stomped those grapes and fell on her face, they, she they, now is gone. They had a big event today. The whole place was rented out. We couldn't do it there. So our backup, our first backup plan was uh, the place that they film as the city of Woodbury in uh, The Walking Dead. Right. Right. Uh, but that because was, we were going to be in Atlanta for sure, so right. we tried to find Atlanta cool place, places. Uh, but there were some logistic issues with like being an outdoor shoot and like that crazy. So then our backup to that was the Cobb Energy Center, which was the CDC at the end of season one of Walking Dead. Um, but the weather forecast for today, all weekend long, said it was definitely going to rain all day today. Yeah, it was definitely going to rain, so we couldn't do an outdoor podcast. Uh, so we had to fall back to this indoor location at the racetrack. And of course, it has not rained a fucking drop all day today. Yeah, it's dry as a bone. And I was I was gonna get a um, giving up an eye this? patch. Well, no, I was gonna get an eye patch because I keep seeing in the comments that I look like the governor. Oh yeah, people keep so saying that. I don't think I do yeah. look like the governor, but there's my eye patch, my temporary eye patch. How's that? Do I look like him when I do that? You no, know, not at all. Not at all. Not, not even the least bit. But also, the Woodbury thing, too, like, people showed me pictures of the location. We were going to have to go back to Atlanta and then go 40 miles on the other side of yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. Because we're outside of Atlanta right now. And when they showed me the photos, I was like, guys, this just looks like a small town. I yeah. mean, it's like we could literally shoot this anywhere and say it was the set of Woodbury. Woodbury. Walking Dead. Although, the Cobb Energy Center thing, that's the It was a thing, cool looking that's location. That's cool. Yeah, no, it looks really cool. That's very cool. I felt bad. We had to cancel on them today. Yeah. Because they were closed on... Friday and then obviously over the weekend. They're surprisingly, we're closed on Easter. Yeah, and um, so we canceled them last minute. Yeah. But I really wanted to film it out there because it was such a cool location. But um, oh well, hopefully they forgive us. Well, that's, this is the the uh, issues you run into with location shooting. Mm -hmm. You've got to be prepared for anything. Yeah. Well, Matt, I tried to save you. Now the tweet feed is filled with how much you do look like the governor. Yeah. So that's on you for fucking ever now. I know. You'll hear about that till the day you die. Who was the guy I looked like before the governor? Who was the, the last pirate I looked like? What? I don't know. He, get, he has an eye patch. That's how much. How much of this is he drank? It's just a, he has an eye patch. You're a pirate if you have an eye patch. All pirates have eye patches. That's Dude, what I'm saying. Speaking He's of pirate. pirates, I, I noticed that in the preview for the next episode of Game of Thrones, Mackenzie Crook is in it, who played Gareth from The Office. Oh, was he? Yeah. I haven't office. seen the preview for the next episode. And he was also so, Pirates of the Caribbean. Last night, yeah, that's how I saw it. Last night, you know, we, uh, before the new the season premiere of Game of Thrones, they, they were playing the previous season finale. They played the season two finale. Mm -hmm. We finished it. Uh, Brandon and Chris came to my room and we were watching it. Uh, we watched the finale. The, the credits go through. And then uh, HBO does its commercial. And they do, coming up next, the best exotic Marigold Hotel. And we were like, what? <laughs> so I'm like flipping through all the channels and I go back to HBO and then, yeah, sure enough, the next thing is Game of Thrones. I don't know why they did that. Judy Dench was trying to get in. The they were just trolling. Dench. Judy Dench was in the trailer, like in the little promo they showed. <laughs> and we, we were really freaked out, like scrolling through all the different uh, HBO channels. So do you, do you have a, a Netflix subscription? Yeah. Did you watch House of Cards? No, everyone says I, could, I should watch that. I liked it. I thought it was great. But I hear that it ends on kind of a cliffhanger and then there's going to be another season. It does. Yeah. What made you watch that? Did you just see House the trailer? Cards? Did you see it as a Netflix exclusive? Everyone that? talks about how great it is. Well, really? I know I, everyone talks about how great it is, but I have to admit, like I read a I read a thing about how Netflix decided how to do it, which was they just used data. It's like people like this show. If we remade it, because a UK uh, British show, right? Oh, it is. It, yeah, and so if we remade it, Americans would probably like it, and people watch a lot of David Fincher on Netflix, and people watch a lot of Kevin Spacey on Netflix. And I thought, well, I like uh, all that too. You know, yeah. So I'm. Well, they're I, I probably would like. This. They're a very data and analytics driven company. Yeah. So it makes sense that they would analyze the data to figure out what it is that people want to watch. Yeah, it works. But that's kind of scary. Like, are people that predictable? Are that pe are people that formulaic? Well, there was the, that company. I think it was Relativity Media. That mm -hmm. they had like when they first started out, they had like a string of huge blockbuster hits, and supposedly the guy behind that had come up with some kind of algorithm for I know exactly what it takes to make a uh, huge box office hit movie, and it's, it's just data points, and really? that's all. 
So I guess yes, we're that, so we're becomes, that predictable. It becomes like a mathematical th equation that is yeah. repeatable. Like we figured out for the podcast, we need uh, one quarter British and one quarter Mexican. So <laughs> it's it, perfect. It's been working out perfectly. And two so to far. three stories about jizz or something. <laughs> After, you talked about your dick again. No, I did. Yeah, I did. did you I? did immediately every podcast. I was because I was. It you was in my head because I, when you were asking what it would take for me to get fired, I immediately I didn't. You say thought this. about your dick when I, mean, I asked you what it would take you to get fired. <laughs> immediately, I didn't say this at the time because there was this much left in the bottle. But now there's this much. Yeah. I was actually thinking, what if I just walked into your office and came on your leg? Well, that no. Would I get fired? No. <laughs> Don't know. Let's not go there at all. Hey, Gavin, like, let's find out. Like, I no. would stand outside your office working wait, out. Wait, 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 wait. Is there a camera? Is there a camera while I'm shooting? Yeah, it? sure, there's a camera. Oh, then it's fine. <laughs> no problem. So, I just want good the footage. Is just really, I just want good footage. It's like Jeff now. Semen is just really offensive, isn't it? Like, there's nothing more offensive than a streak of semen. It's very, that's... Uh, like, spit is pretty bad. Talking about it right now is pretty <laughs> well, bad. Well, I just, I just I spit... His point. I just spit on Matt. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a few minutes ago, uh, which is, I guess, a step below Probably that. Probably the most disgusting thing that's <laughs> happened to me. Well, in Atlanta, it's even more disgusting than the, the ham dog aftermath. So, which was not good. a lot of times on the podcast, over the course of the podcast, I'd like to talk a little bit in a <laughs> retrospective manner about Rooster Teeth and okay. the podcast. Maybe I, we should talk I about like, a, how some of the shows started. I have a visual aid. What is that? I have a, can, I, can I bust this out real quick? Yeah, do it. You have a visual aid? I do, I do. So, I was, my kid, you know, the interesting thing about. Um, Rooster Teeth is that... You he know, really we, does. I do. The interesting <laughs> thing about Rooster Teeth, uh, the especially for... This is for, the interesting thing about Rooster Teeth. Well, just how it's affected our lives personally that the, the fans not, might not be aware of is uh, you trying to like uh, chart moments in your life based on what we, we've been doing with Rooster Teeth yeah. all over. And then it's interesting is like we all have, or a lot of us have kids, um, uh, Bernie and me and uh, Jeff and... Breeders. A lot, yeah, a lot of other people at the company now. And like, uh, my kids were all born after we started Red versus Blue, uh -huh. and it's just a weird thing to think about that in a timeline. So I actually I had to explain to my six-year-old what happened with Red versus Blue and how that started because he's just kind of figured out what Rooster Teeth is now. And can we? Can you see that? This is he, he drew a picture of how Rooster Teeth started. So I explained to him, it's like Bernie had this great idea for doing Red versus Blue, and he came up with this funny stuff, and he called Daddy and said, "Would you be?" Uh, Sarge in the show, and that's how we started. And then after after things went well, we all moved from LA to to Austin. So this is his reinterpretation of it: is that this is Daddy is Sarge, okay? And and you're, then you're, you're, and then and then Bernie, I I came to Austin as Sarge, and when I got there, you were there. That's you. Uh -huh. Did you good do good job of you? Yeah, it's fa Isn't it's perfect? fantastic. And then, he's six. Come on, come on. Hey. Okay, sorry. Your face is a scribble. And then he get, we got, I got to Austin. I got to Austin as, as Sarge in my armor. And you said, never mind, we're going to do Star Wars instead. Is that That's a lightsaber. <laughs> so you, you, you did a switcheroo. Well, and, and am I handing you a paint of cocoa? You're having, having, handing me a Coke. Your, so. kids, oh. your kids do something, or were doing something earlier, which was the cutest thing ever, where they were, they were quoting an animated adventure to me. They love you, you on the animated adventure. Where the animated adventure where I tell Miles he has to leave yeah. uh, when he shows up. And they came up to me, and they both were just like, yeah, you have to leave. <laughs> that's all they would say over and over. They look at Gus, and they go, yeah, you need to leave. So when are we replacing Jordan? I know, right? That's an animated adventure. Are you right a there. Cyclops? What is that? An I am a, that's his visor. It's that's Sarge. A, yeah. Oh, you're wearing the helmet. Yeah, I, was was in, I showed up in my costume, and Bernie had switched to Star Wars. <laughs> So there you go. That's that. That's the entire story of Rooster you, Teeth. Uh, right you you actually changed the voice of Sarge slightly, didn't you, from the beginning? I changed yeah. a lot. You did because I think actually my first pitch for doing Sarge to Bernie was he said, "Can you do Arlie Ermy?" Uh huh. Who is the drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket? Full Metal, Metal Jacket. And I I said, "Well, that's kind of tough because he's like he's got an interesting voice where it's like he's he sounds very authoritative and he's it's kind of a strained sound, but it's not it's not." really that gruff if you listen to it. It's, it's strained, but right. not gruff. And gruff was a lot easier for me to do than strained. So I said, could I do half Arlie Ermey, half Mr. T? Because I wanted to put, I pitied the fool at the end of all of Sarge's <laughs> lines. <laughs> and Bernie didn't like that idea. So we started, I started trying to do, a, I did a really bad Arlie Ermey impersonation <laughs> in the first season. 
and then after that, like I couldn't keep up with it, so I just started modulating well, it, it to it be was something else. Annoying to do. Yeah. Next year is gonna be pitted fool. <laughs> That's all it's gonna be. Guys, I want to apologize for whatever is going on with my mic. I'm gonna try to hold it in my hand for a little while. Do you want to share mine? No, I, people in the people in the Twitter are just going kind of nuts over it. So apparently, it's my mic is acting up. I apologize for that. Yeah, that wasn't planned at all. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Didn't, you know? Yeah. Sorry, they're still seeing it. So if it's still a problem, just let me know, please. Yeah, sorry about that. No, like it's it's really. Interesting. It's really, there's a lot of challenges with moving our entire podcast production somewhere and, uh, and going with it. Have we replaced your microphone yet? We have spares. We have backups. I was about to ask if we do, but I don't know if we do or not. So do we have a, maybe you can run a different one for me. Yeah, well, do we have a, a spare mic? I don't know if we can spare run for him. No, no spare XLRs. Oh, no spare XLRs. Gotcha. Okay, so, um, but Gus, we know how you first heard about Red versus Blue, because I basically just went over to your house and pointed the camera in your face and said, Say this and that, Matt. Do you remember the first time we talked about red versus blue at all? Uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. I definitely remember the first time we talked about rooster teeth, which was you called and said, "Oh, I had a, uh, we have to, I have to go file uh, to be a business, and um, we can't do cockbite <laughs> enterprises or whatever the, you know, and we can't do red versus blue incorporated." And I got a great idea for what what we call it, rooster teeth. I thought that's that's perfect. For some reason, I remember that phone call really well. I thought that was genius. Um, I can't remember one of the first like couple of red versus blue quotes or first times we talked about red versus blue. But um, I think you know Joel was over all the time. It was probably like Bernie was calling, just asking about you know, do we have you know we have a couple extra parts? Can you guys do them? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And we were just recorded them in the apartment. I remember, like when we did the uh, the first line reading for episode one. It's on, uh, you know, bonus yeah, features some of the DVDs. Yeah. Like I remember thinking, like I remember even asking Kimber at the time with the camera, like, why are you recording this? Like this is mm-hmm. this is stupid because we had made so many failed websites up to that point. Yeah. And uh, I didn't understand what what the point of documenting it was. So, I have a question for both yeah. of you. What in the last ten years has been your ultimate moment in Rooster Teeth? Man, it's hard to say. You know, it was hard at the top. I think I think probably the first. RTX, probably first RTX, and going into the ballroom with everybody because we'd been in in huge, um, uh, you know, gatherings with with fans like that before, but that was the most intense um, display of affection and just enthusiasm for us because I think everyone who went to the first year RTX was like. Yeah, they, you know, were, they were really dedicated. They were I mean, really was, dedicated, was, and they took a chance on us yeah. with RTX, and, and I, I hope it paid off for everybody. I, we, I thought it was great. It, that was a huge, huge one. And then um, the Lincoln Center showing. Yeah, that was great. The Lincoln Center was unbelievable. It was season two premiere. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get sidetracked for a second here. Yeah. Because you talked about RTX. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I read off uh, some of our exhibitors the other week, uh, one of which was Iron Galaxy Studios. Oh, right, um, right. And uh, people may not know who they are necessarily, but they had a big coming out, a big presentation at PAX East uh, just the other week, where uh, they're the guys who developed Dive Kick, yeah. which is the ultimate fighting game. And this is all anybody could talk about at PAX. It was easily the coolest thing I saw at PAX. Yeah. So uh, they're bringing Dive Kick to RTX. We're oh, going to have some, awesome. some center stage time with it. It's a fighting game with only two buttons, dive and kick. So all you do is... Dive and kick against your opponent. And, so it's just uh, really intense. Like you, yeah, like, uh, absolutely. It's it, it's like super strategic. Like you're jumping and trying to figure out when the optimum time to attack your opponent is or to kick your opponent. And I was reading. It looks kind of like um, um, there's a Neo Geo game um, that reminds me of the art style. I can't think of the name right now, but uh, I was reading an interview with one of the developers and. One of the things is if you're on the ground and you hit kick, you yeah. like dash backwards. And someone was asking him, why is it that when you kick on the ground, you dive back or you jump backwards? And the developer said, it's not that you're jumping backwards. What happens is you kick the earth so hard, you rotate it away from you. <laughs> and it gives the illusion that you're, you're, you're jumping backwards. That's and I was like, that is perfect for that game. That's great. But it's supposed to be somewhat of a parody of fighting games, but also kind of like an homage from what I understand. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and one, it's like instant one-hit kills. That's great. Uh, it's like super, if you're into fighting games, it's like, 
super dilute, like super concentrated, like the ultimate fighting game experience. It's, uh, it's, it's really great. Do you so. think video games are getting easier? I actually was just in an arcade. It's like the first time I've ever been to an arcade and I played Donkey Kong, like on a really old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, those games are hard. Do you know I, I, I really hate you right now. I wish Bernie had your microphone. Right. Why? Because I want to talk to you about Bioshock Infinite. And he's talking about Donkey Kong. I, they said they can pick me up on Gavin's mic. No, you don't, don't, don't get through all that. They said they can pick me up on Gavin's okay. mic. So go ahead. I'll just talk a little louder. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at, I think, like, I'm about 10 minutes away from finishing Bioshock Infinite finally. Oh, yeah? Um, By the way, great, great story. Play it through the second time. It does not hold up. Yeah. That story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think that overall, and of course I'm not done yet, okay. but atmosphere-wise and gameplay-wise, I think I liked the original Bioshock more. It's a better game. Yeah. I think so. Uh, I thought map layout and design was better. I, I thought they did a better job of creating atmosphere. Not that they did a bad job of creating atmosphere in Bioshock Infinite. I think they just set the bar way too high on the first go-round. Mm. Do you think so? I, I think also, too, it's like... I mean, if that was a movie, that would be like a trilogy. Like, everything they go through in Infinite, it's just like... I, I, I don't want to give any spoilers because a lot of people are still playing it. But I'm kind of curious where <laughs> Gavin's attentiveness is really freaking me out. What's up, man? But I'm just kind of, I'm just, it, it's a very long game. And I think especially with an interactive game that depends so much on a narrative storyline, you can play through so much that you lose, like, at the, at, like, by the time you're in the middle of, like, the eighth act, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Why am I even here anymore? I, I feel like at this point where I am, like, there are parts I wish that had been cut out. I agree. Like, I feel like there's some parts where it's like I'm circling back and redoing things, like, a lot of backtracking in that game. I can't, I don't want to give spoilers. But there's certain parts where it's like, you go, you do one thing, and it's like, oh, go back and look at these three things. Right. And then come back and you can go forward. It's like, why, why, why not just proceed straightforward? I feel, I feel like it's a little too long. Why hasn't that been turned into a movie, the first one? Uh, I think it was, like, Gore Verbinski had it for a little while. Yeah. I think it's on the docket. No one's made a really killer video game movie yet. Like, Prince of Persia, yeah. I think, did well financially. But there's, there's been no, like, Batman. You know, like yeah. the Tim Burton what Batman is the, what is the, that launched all the superhero movies. What's the most popular? Or the, in the most recent generation, I guess Spider-Man was the one that right. really like, launched everything. Resident Evil. What about it? I mean, like, what's the most popular video, video game? game movie? Movie? Tomb Raider. Franchise. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider probably. Don't the uh, Pokemon movies do pretty well? What? I don't care. But don't Pokemon's a video game based on a cartoon, isn't it? Or no, I think it was a cartoon based on a video game. Yeah, the, vi the video it game is, is red and blue. It was like Transformers, where it's like you make the cartoon to sell the toys. Okay. No, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. You know... That was another reason we're here. We got kicked off a track for Transformers. Yeah, the circuit there. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, say everyone's kind of going nuts about me being the least bit critical of Bioshock Infinite. I thought it was a very good game. It's a great game. We should definitely do a spoiler cast based on that one, though, since it's such a heavy narrative game. Like people, One guy in particular said, oh, you like the ending of Mass Effect, but you didn't like the ending of Infinite? Yeah, the ending of Mass Effect was completely and totally fine. I still don't know what people's issues are with Mass Effect. It's it makes sense and it tied things it's up. It's when you finish it a second time and you go through and you see the other options. Yeah. That's when you have a problem. Because I was fine with it my first playthrough. Then when I played through and chose the other ending and I realized that how similar they were, that's when I had a problem. With yeah. It. See, I don't even know where you are in Bioshock Infinite. I don't want to give spoilers, so we'll just wait for a later time. So is it, it's a prequel, right, to the underwater one? Yes. So it was in the sky first but and then it was underwater. As far as I know, so far where I'm in the game, they're not related. Oh. But it's set, it takes place earlier in time. Yes. Okay. So it's not the same years. dude, it's not no, Andrew it's not Ryan. But who knows? You know, that, that game's, at the, the point where I am, it's, it's really touching on a lot of interesting things about different possibilities and like quantum mechanics and different universes. I can't even get that in there. I'm just going to give up. <laughs> you're like, look, how far are you in your <laughs> We're, we're, we're going to wrap up relatively soon. I'm warning you right now. This is your early warning. Nah. So I well, we got we got we we got to wrap up. Retrospective here. All right, let's talk okay, about let's it. Talk. We got to wrap up at some point though, because we got to get up at like four a.m. tomorrow. Hollem. Fucking you went from Hollywood Hollem to old man. Give <laughs> 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 my. <laughs> but, but you guys, are, you guys are old now. You're old. Yeah. You were always old. You were like forty. You were kind of like Jack is now, where you were like born at forty. Well, Jack's yeah. definitely the oldest person at the company, right? Yeah. No, he's just curmudgeonly. Although he's coming out of his shell a little bit, though. A little bit. He's less curmudgeonly. The, uh, but, you know, Gus was always the oldest one. Yeah. And in the early days, too, um, you were also always the most recognizable because you're the most distinct looking, I think. Does that mean I'm ugly? Yes, that means you're ugly. I don't <laughs> say that. Like, very Are you rude. a good judge of an attractive man? No. 
Clearly. Not at all. What would be his basis? <laughs> <laughs> look at me. This is the best I can do. <laughs> do you think I know what good look what good is? No. It's like, wow, Brad Pitt would look good if he stayed awake for 12 hours. <laughs> Instead of going to sleep tonight, then he would look great and uh, got sick for a month. <laughs> God, fucking, this fucking illness, man. But uh, yeah, and we would go everywhere. Like we would go to Best Buy, and we'd be like, everybody would be like, oh, Gus, and they'd come out and like. I remember the early days. You were like the face of Red versus Blue. I remember the first time I signed uh, an autograph was at the parking lot of Fries, and it was before. It was right before we started Red versus Blue. Um, someone had. Recognized me in the parking lot of Fry's in Austin and brought me a copy of the Apple Switch parody we did that he had burned to a CD. Yeah. And uh, he was he said like he had burned a stack of them and he was sharing them with his friends. It was before like thumb drives really existed. Yeah. It's like that was the way you would do it. That was like the, the best, yeah. like, most economical way to share files was via burning them to CDR. So wait, why did he sign one of his CDRs? Why did he have this on him at the time? Because he was passing them out to his friends. Oh, he just happened to have it on yeah. him? Oh, weird. They had like a spindle of them that he had burned. <laughs> you know, it is over the course of 10 years, it, one of the most fun things to do is ask people how they heard about Red vs. Blue, or how they heard about Rushdie, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, it, the answers are always completely different. Well, it's because the company's done so much. There's so many different doorways to come into the company. And it's such a big it's, window of time, too. It is. You know? Yeah. I mean, we talked a little bit about one of the things that pissed us off early on is um, there were always sites. There weren't many web series when we started. I don't even know if the term web series was even used. Um, we had to kind of teach people when we first started that here's the thing, and there's going to be another one next week. I don't know if the term viral, viral video. Was no, used. viral that, video, because our... That, our that, that, that wouldn't use, there was no YouTube. There the was no the YouTube. internet wasn't as annoying back then, so it didn't come up with terms it's like true. viral video. But there's a bunch of going viral. Like the first viral thing that I can remember uh, it was this Dancing Baby. And we considered right. his Switch ad went viral. Like we yeah. talked about that. I was going to say South Park, the South Park uh, Christmas letter. But yeah, it's Dancing Baby. Yeah. Dancing yeah. Baby was before the, the, that. Jesus versus Santa or whatever. Yeah, and it was so different how you watched things back then. Like, people passed them around on CDs. I remember we would go to, uh, to Bernie's office uh, and to try to download the South Park thing. And it was like, because you, you couldn't download it on a normal, you know, home internet dial-up connection. Right. And uh, it's just completely different. Well, like, when we started um, Red versus Blue and we were doing the QuickTime downloads mm -hmm. for everything uh, in the office I was working in, was working on a movie and there was a guy who was like really into technology there and he came in and I was watching a Red vs. Blue episode, it was like episode two or three. And he, he, this guy came in and goes, hey, have you heard of this new thing that uh, they're doing with Flash where you can encode Flash as video now? And he wanted to talk to me about that and I was like, eh, whatever, that's not gonna happen, you know? <laughs> and like at the time we were like downloading, you know, QuickTime to everybody and we'd explain to everybody on the website how to do it and now you don't, download anything, you stream it, you know, yeah. you watch it like we're streaming this now, you stream stuff on YouTube or Blip you or whatever. You stream on your fucking phone. On your phone, whatever, yeah. You, nobody's like, oh, I'm gonna download the file, I'm gonna find where it is on my hard drive, yeah. and then I can watch it, whatever. It's like, it really is a totally different world, and that's all happened over the course of the 10 years we've been doing it's this. It's actually one of the biggest things that reduced our expenses, because yeah. when we first started, we had to figure out a way to host all this stuff, because YouTube didn't exist. And when one of our videos got really popular, it actually cost us a bunch of money. And that was something that, you know, I don't think people talk and about. And we would anymore. have to have mirrors. Remember mirrors? Yeah. Like download mirrors. Like, yeah. download from here. If that one, you, if you can't get it from here, download yeah. from here. You used to give off here. torrent links yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 We stopped doing that after people used the torrent links. We taught people how to use BitTorrent and then they used it to pirate the DVD. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to stop doing that. I remember too how we figured out how many, uh, ep how many downloads there had been, how many times people had viewed the video. We didn't have a counter, you know, like you do on YouTube. It was just uh, Gus would get the log files, and it's like we served this much yeah. data. The the video well, we had this week was this big, well, and just divide. You could also write a script where you could parse the web logs and pull out the number of gets for that yeah. individual file, and then you would put them all in a file like lines, and then you would count how many lines were in Whoa. the file. So you would like cat Apache log. So pipe, grep, get, whatever, <laughs> pipe, WC, grep. dash L, yeah. and then it would return you a number, and it'd be like, how many you... So back when a video did really well, like I think episode two was, what was the one that made it take I off? I think episode two kind episode of took two. it off, yeah, right? Yeah, it was 2,000 so, people watched episode one, and then 20, uh, 250,000 watched episode Were you three. worried that it would cost you too much money? Like that it'd be too yeah. popular? Yeah, because we had three different data centers all around the US where we were hosting stuff. Uh, and it was, it was, and we couldn't keep up with it. I wonder how many times total 
across every platform that episode one of Red vs. Blue has been seen. It would be impossible to tell. I it's think it's got to be one of the most viewed of videos ever. Yeah. It's got to be. It might be a billion. You know, I mean, plus of all the times that it's appeared on YouTube and every other uh, internet video platform that wasn't uploaded by us, that was uploaded by someone else and would have, you know, two, five million views, whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's just so many instances of them. One of, one of the early, one of my earlier visits to the company, uh, probably 2007 time, I actually emailed YouTube and got the Rooster Teeth account from someone who had it. Oh, you're the one Some, that had that? Yeah, it actually, the address, it came to my email address, the Rooster Teeth. And then we had another account where I would just take down. That's the people. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 that's, that's yeah. the other one. Yeah, that was like a job that you passed over to me for a well, while. Well, that was the funny thing, like originally, with YouTube, the way you got videos taken down was through fax. <laughs> oh, do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, they, I remember no, someone no, who did it. F A X, not F A Q S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. F A X. Yeah. There was no automated way to do takedowns, so had they told us them. we had. I had to fax them URLs, so I like I made like a thirty-page fax of like all the different <laughs> URLs that you know people yeah. had for. I'm just imagining the guy who's standing at the fax machine on the other side, like watching it come out, going, "Oh my god!" And I sent it to them, and then like instantly they gave us the ability to, yeah. <laughs> to take down. So, I just posted on Twitter, I just put up the counter that I had for counting our hits, and it's like the very first hit ever on redversablue.com. I screenshotted it. You did? Oh, wow. Yeah, just in case, just in case you know, things took off. Gavin, right quit awesome. moving your legs. Unique, Sorry, man. Unique number one. It was Friday, March 8th, 2003, when we were setting up the website. Yep. That's so awesome. just like everything else, we were doing it two days before the site launched. We were there <laughs> setting everything up. And it's we, from the, that was the counter.com. I remember that. Yeah. That's what we used for a long time. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I remember that. Because we didn't know how to do it ourselves. But you can actually see how stuff would go viral, like you talked about it, because he would parse those logs, like Gus would do that, he'd watch. And you would watch a video, like somebody at, like for instance, who was working at Dell and worked in the Dell.com domain, mm -hmm. they would hit the site and they would pull a video. Then all of a sudden, five more people from Dell.com would do it, and then 30 more people would do it. So you'd see how it would spread through organizations like that. And I remember Gus used to love doing that stuff all the time, like yeah. parse it out and how it's going. And it was interesting the day that it was like, we got one hit from Microsoft.com, then we got five, then we got a thousand hits. You could hits. watch it. It was like over time, like over the course of minutes. Yeah. You could watch it like spread. It's awesome. <laughs> and I said, with like the phone ring like was, the next day. Yeah. It was and like the infection from when I sneezed on you a second ago. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you'll keep that just to you guys. Like that will be a not so viral hit. All right. Well, let's, uh, let, let's wrap this up. How'd you meet Gavin? How did I meet Gavin? I met Gavin for the first time in London when we went there for that film festival. That how, was, old, how old were you? It was October 2004, so I think I was 15 or 16. I met you and your friend Ferry. <laughs> Johnny Ferry, yeah. He was the one that showed me Red vs. Blue because we had a substitute teacher one day and she put us all in alphabetical order. So Ferry was next to Free, so I had to sit next to him. I was like, oh, sit next to Ferry. He's like, you play Halo, right? I was like, yeah. He said, look at this. And I was like, oh. What did you do? Quit moving your leg. What did you say? Did quit he hand you something? Yeah, he gave me a bit of paper. It said red versus blue.com on it. Oh. Quit, quit moving your leg. So okay. he, he literally handed you a note. <laughs> URL Check like, this box if you like red versus blue. <laughs> that's too funny. Yeah, and then and that's, so like I said, my first interaction with him was when he tried to lie to get a free sponsorship. I'm super, do you, how do you remember that? I remembered all of those from the early days. I you were one of the was, first people who tried it. He was yeah. an active member of the site, and like you were posting like, Pictures of yourself cloned all over your backyard. Yeah, I remember. That. I had a lot of free time mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Yeah, you said long hair. Yeah, really long hair. Down to you were pretty. Yeah. And we know how you two met. We know how Gus and Matt, you guys met because it's the subject of a Rushdie animated adventure. When Gus refused to go to Vegas and jumped out of the car. Although we we actually had met one time prior to that. I don't remember at, this. At Tele Network, at uh, you had hired me to do photography stuff. For what? Oh, for like posters for or something. Our convention stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember we did the poster with you of like why you don't want to hire a uh, tech support guy because they're like you. Yeah. Remember that poster? That's right. I, that's, I do that's remember that. Was. Yeah. Matt, Matt that was, was you? That was that. me. I, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I did a terrible job too. Yeah. It was pretty awful. It was pretty bad. Well, I also then we did our Photoshop skills and they were just those just were loud. It was like Photoshop 2. Yeah. We've learned a lot since those days. So, but anyway, thank yeah. you to everyone who, who watches and uh, who supports the work we do. We wouldn't be here after 10 years if it wasn't for um, the audience and people you know, enjoying the work. We, that might, we, be here. we might be here. We might be drivers. This is like the sad, soppy part. Will, of there the, be, the podcast. will there be 10 more years, do you think? 
I hope there's more than 10 more years. Really? At this point, I have no applicable career skills anywhere else. <laughs> really? Okay, Rever Arushi stops tomorrow. What do you do? Shotgun in the mouth? Is that your... Mass murder? I don't know. <laughs> I, I start checking down my vendetta list. <laughs> you start working on a list. I like it. That's a movie in itself. Matt could have a career. Matt's no, a CEO. I don't. Think, I don't think. I, I don't know, man. I remember when we were doing season two. Like, you put out a LinkedIn. I was still getting week, a lot of calls for for work, for movies and TV shows, and I was turning them down. And then once we got into season three, I didn't get any more phone calls, and I thought, okay, season three better work. I guess <laughs> I'm in it now. This I, is it. I remember when we started. I would not buy a car or buy a house because I was like, there's no way this is ever going to last. Yeah. It was like I want. I want to have no debt because this is going to go away. Like tomorrow. Yeah. There's no way this is going to last. Yeah. How, well, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing that we've been here for 10 years and um, it's, you know, I, I was going to say I can't think of a, a better group of people the, to spend 10 years with, but I probably can. I, can. I probably can. Some, some, some so, girls from the Claremont Lounge? Yeah. We'll figure out from 820. But I've had a good time. Yeah, I've had been, a really good time. Yeah, it's been, it really has been. It has been an absolute blast to earn a living this way. You know, if you want to call it work, I guess we'd call it work. But yeah. it has been an amazing way to spend a decade, for sure. I'm very appreciative to be a part of it. You it's actually be. been a giant. It's almost going to be half my life at some point. Yeah. Because yeah. I started quite young. I see people on Twitter are, Twitter are asking how you and I met Bernie. I feel like we've gone over that a million times. No, no, I, I know. I did, I did a round of those, how I met everybody on your birthdays one year. Yeah. Like every year in my journal, whenever, uh, for a year when someone's birthday came up, I said how I met them. And I remember specifically you, you were working at the company, and I didn't at know you that well. The old place. The old place, the old company. The old call center. The tech support company. And we had a Dreamcast that was in the break room, and we were playing Dead or Alive 2, and we'd have competitions. And this guy sat down next to me, and it was you, and I beat the shit out of you in the first round. And I was kind of a video game player where it's like, I felt like I should apologize for my video game skills. Like I should like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a thing that you're good at video games. And so I said, I said, I should warn you, I said, I'm actually pretty good at video games. Then the second round started and he perfected me. Like he just destroyed me in the next round. And he goes, he goes like this really slowly. It was the other way, but I'll do it like this. And he goes, I'm pretty good at video games too. <laughs> That's exactly how our relationship started. I remember I was playing as Helena and I, I had figured out a combo where I could play against your character uh -huh. and like perfect like I knew exactly all the moves to go through it was like it was a checklist in my mind it was like do these 10 moves and you win the game yep and so it was just like one like going down the list and it was like done perfect <laughs> did you slam the controller down and walk out no, I was that? so angry I was like this motherfucker <laughs> I was like I've been like I took it easy on him because I don't know him and he tells me he knows how to play video games I was like no 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 fuck you you're getting the list now <laughs> God, I feel like you should now go on the list here. It's like they wonder how we met Jack P and everybody else. So I met Jack P at a poker game. It's really simple. And uh, he was writing for a site called Ain't It Cool News. And uh, when I saw him, I remember the uh, first time I saw Barbara, uh, I saw her uh, profile on the site. I thought she was a fake account, mm -hmm. and I was going to delete her account. Well, if it was a she girl right on the there? site, we thought it was a fake account. In What's those, that? If it was a girl on the site, we thought it was a fake account <laughs> in those days. Well, it was a, it was, she was this 15-year-old blonde from Canada. I was like, this is this yeah. screams her, there's, fake there, account. There are yeah. pictures of Bar you and me and Barbara at RBBTO in like 2004 or she has five. She like braces and pigtails. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's super, super awkward. I think we signed your arm and you're like holding your arm up. Michael we know because we the Reddit video that, he, that we saw. The crackdown one. Watched that crackdown video and immediately fell in love with it. Um, and then Kathleen I met through Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have worked in animation in Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. Kathleen hired me for Scooby-Doo. And then the main, the main group, or the, the one that started at least Rooster Teeth uh, is Basically, two groups came together. It was guys I worked with in Austin and then guys I'd worked on movies with. So Jeff and uh, Gus from my tech company that I worked at, and then uh, it was Matt and Joel who I'd made movies with in college. Did, did you know that when we worked at the call center, uh, you know, Jeff was a level one employee, like a base entry level employee, and I was not his manager. Someone else was his manager at the right. time. Uh, his manager did not want to promote him to a level two employee because he thought he was faking his call times. And I kept, lobbying for Jeff to be promoted to a level two employee. And it was finally decided in a game of horse, like literally a physical game of horse at the basketball court out in front <laughs> of our call center. And I won the game. Who are you playing that you beat in yeah. a game of horse? Uh, Kulsar. Re you beat Dave Kulsar in a game of horse? And so he had, he had to promote Jeff to level two employee at that time. Wow. 
Uh, and I, I wonder about that a lot. Like, that is like lost such an horse? Alabama wow. country song story. <laughs> like, <laughs> some competition. A like, spitting contest. Career. Yeah, he would not. He did not want to promote him. And, and then Jason works at the call center. Another funny thing about that thing. This is what Dan always says. I don't know if it's true or not, though. Uh, is that Dan worked at the call center with us? Dan, who plays Donut in Red vs. Blue, and his thing about how he came to work at the call center was he just showed up for work. <laughs> like he just came, like he was hired. He interviewed and never got a call back, but he just showed up like he was a new employee. Didn't you get a promotion the same way? No. Like no. you showed up saying, and I, I, I was promoted. <laughs> no, it didn't work like, that oh, way. Oh, you were? Okay, cool. It's amazing yeah. how much confidence can get you. Just forcefully. It's I true. think when it came time to cut him a check, Bernie was like, why don't I have this guy's paperwork? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of other people in the company how we met him. Um, you know, it's just like along the way, we just met people. A lot of people that we've hired have been through the community. Uh, yeah. A lot of our hires have been that way. You know, that's how we first uh, discovered like Luke McKay. Yeah. Uh, Nico is from the community too, wasn't he? Grasshopper. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, he wrote me in episode six and said, "I like your show, but I hate and, your music." And Ben. Yeah, Ben was the same way. Jamin. He was Mr. Gavin here. Mm -hmm. Gavino mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. So yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to to grow the company that way too. And it's like there's a lot of times over the course of the years, especially in the first nine years when I was CEO, there's definitely times when we could have grown, I think, faster. But I think the, the real story of Rooster Teeth long term is going to be the longevity and the perseverance of the company and how we've always adapted. You know, we came from an era before YouTube. Um, we had our own website. We were going up against major sites, which, you know, seemed big at the time, like MySpace. And we were up against like yeah. Heavy.com, you know. Um, what was it? Liquid? What was the Liquid Nation or whatever? Oh, yeah. Like all these sites that like, did, did, like don't exist anymore. But they were huge at the time, so, you know. And it's yeah. like now when you talk about stuff like Twitter and Facebook, uh, and YouTube even, it's like trying to stay alive in those environments. It's yeah. like you always have to adapt and stay flexible, and I think that's what we've done really well. Thanks, Monty, by the way. What he just it? texted me and said, how is it you say Juan as Juan, but wonder prop properly? <laughs> uh, and I think we know, we explain how we met Monty, right? We just saw his video, yeah. Hey Lloyd, and then we tried for three years to, to work with him while he... And then you, you had a serendipitous meeting with him at Comic-Con, wasn't it? Yeah, it was actually, the guy who put that panel together was Kale Anonymous from Machinima, and he just did that video. Did you see the first party, uh, first, first, person first person party, person party yeah. of our party together? Yeah, that was him? That was Kyle that did that. Oh, I didn't or know Kale, that. it's not Kyle. Kale Anonymous who did that. And uh, he's the guy who actually was the reason that Monty and I got in the same room. Oh, that's great. I, we never told this to, to Kale, but he, he, I basically did the panel because I saw Monty's name on the list, and Monty said he did the panel because Please. he saw my name on the list, and then we, afterwards we just all talked together. And we were on the panel with the dude who crashed our PAX panel. The Keith Oh. oh. And, What's his name? I know. His name. <laughs> and he, cra he, he, he was an asshole during that panel, too. Fuck that guy. I, when I showed up to PAX East this year, I, I, I went to the organizer, and I was like, we're not going to run into... So and so again, are we? They're like, not if we have anything to do about it. I listen. I still don't have any problem. I think that guy's super talented. I absolutely have a problem with I that. I just think he. I don't think people realize that, like, when you're a performer and you go and you crash something, you can't be like a greedy performer. If, if he's yeah. probably one of the greediest performers that I've ever seen. If he had asked us or told us ahead of time, I'd have been totally fine with yeah. that. Yeah. But the fact that he shows up and then usurps it. That's, that's unacceptable. You just took it too far. It's just too greedy. Yeah. It's just too, too greedy. Too greedy. It, greedy. Performance is a two-way thing all yeah. the time. It is. It's like, even when yeah. you try to work with them, it just like, it didn't go it anywhere. Is, it's always a two-way street, like down to the most fundamental level of just like, you know, being in a scene with somebody else. And if you're going to come up and do something like that, you're in a scene with somebody else. So mm -hmm. you got to take cues from the other person or yeah. the other people. Do you think right, that... we got to wrap. we got to wrap. All right. All right, I have one more question then. Last one. Prediction. Do you think the internet will be more different in 10 years from now? Like the gap between 10 years and now, 10 years ago, will be different from 10 years from now? Wow. It'll be a bigger difference. No, because it didn't really exist. Like, we were making stuff for dial-up back then. And I don't think there'll be as big a shifts from dial-up. It will. Because technology advances we'll way quicker. From hardline broadband home connections to wireless mobile connections. And, wear sure. and wearable stuff, too. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's going to be totally different. Before, the computer and your download was a physical locked location. Now it's wherever you want it to be. And moving forward, it's going to be even more diverse. Well, like, will everybody in 10 years have, like... Uh, Google um, it's a lady lenses, on me. glasses, know? yeah, Google like contact, glass. con no contact lenses, and uh. be talking about wasn't it funny ten years ago we thought Google glasses were going to be the thing. Or Google might not be around. Or Google might not be around. Yeah, Google might be MySpace. I think the next ten years for the internet are going to be uh, uh, a lot more regulation of the internet and a lot more segmentation so, of it. Like what, ten years from now, we might not recognize the internet as one continuous thing like it is now. Well, I, so. I hope that ladybugs are good luck, right? There's a thousand ladybugs. So we got good luck. Only if you inhale them. Yeah. I hope that the internet does not turn into the TV model where it's all giant 
networks. Well, there's a, and there's a lot of people invested to make there's that There's a lot happen. of people invested to make that happen. And I, I would love if companies like ours that are smaller and you know independent, uh, independent could continue to thrive on the internet uh, in the way you can't do in uh, TV because it's all giant corporations that, right. that control that. That'd be, I think that would be good for everybody, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, that's one of the dis disappointing things for me about the internet is that I feel like a lot of people have moved out to the West Coast feel like it's that's where they have to go yeah. to, the YouTube uh, generation. to make it. Yeah. 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 And no, it I doesn't matter. As long as you have broadband, you can yeah. be anywhere in the world. But at the end of the day, we're like wrapping like up. Yeah, that's true. But I, th I do think our story has, has followed the same path as the internet in general. I mean, when we started, internet was always about like people who like at their homes, in their spare bedrooms, or in their garages, starting these sites, or starting this new technology, or starting these shows, and then growing yeah. and building it's, into something else. And, or, and then conglomerating and making these big companies. But I think it, over the course of our entire company, we've done that just like navigated that path along with everybody else. In a lot of ways, it makes me think about the personal computer revolution when that started. It was mm -hmm. people making them in their garages and in their spare yeah. bedrooms who then formed big companies out of it and yeah. you know, really made a difference like that. So I think to answer your question, I think the next 10 years for our company, I, it's interesting because at this stage, it's like where we are now and the size we are now, we got 45 people that work for mm -hmm. us, fluctuating almost on a daily basis. Um, you know, what do we do, where do we go from here? You know, and Matt's going to be the guy who's going like, to guide us through that and figure us out. I'm excited to watch this in 10 years and feel dumb yeah. about our predictions. All right. Well, that's it. We're all done. And also, this, la this ladybug's going to fly off. <laughs> so, uh, everyone, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, we do our live stream podcasts every Monday. You can check them out at rushit.com. And uh, this will be out for everyone on iTunes tomorrow. So, thanks for watching. Yeah. And thank thanks. you for 10 years. Thank you for 10 Thank years. you. Bye. I'm going to buy some shoes.